Alrighty, so we're going to get started tonight. I'll get started on a warm-up set. Tonight's uh, focus is going to be, on, like I said earlier, is going to be on action. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at Samurai Champloo and uh, some other things for inspiration and uh, stuff to do with loosening up and thinking about action a little bit. But uh, here, let me put on some screen beats and then we'll get started with our figure drawing set. And up in the corner of the screen is uh, Magna Studio. There's some people drawing some stuff there. If you want to participate in that, um, let's see, uh, there's multiple links in, uh, let's see, did I copy paste that link right? I hope I did. So if you want to participate in the Magna Studio thing, I'm going to put, I'm going to put a, a, a multiple links to it so there's enough space for everyone to draw on the same document. Uh, the, uh, the other documents are going to be other instances of it, uh, other page, other, like, storyboard pages of it, basically, on the same document, that are blank. So if you want to participate, the links are in here. This is the first instance, this, this is the second instance right here. And I can probably make it, I'll just, pre it looks like we have quite a few people today, so I'm going to maybe make a third one just to be on the safe side. There we go, Let's switch over there. Invite. There we go. So I'm going to start us on a figure pose set. Also, this is some sketching that I was doing earlier today while we were watching Samurai Champloo. This is not really Mugen. This is just me kind of loosening up with some generic character that has some kind of loose hair similar to Mugen a bit without really trying to copy him. So kind of vi I was trying to vibe a little bit with the way they approach figures in Samurai Champloo a little bit. And I'll probably watch some more of that tomorrow, too, because I was getting some good vibes from it. Uh, up on the screen on the upper right, by the way, is, is Mas one of Masaki Yuasa's scenes from uh, from Champloo. It's very, it, it went very mind game in that scene. Um, but I'll just leave that on loop up there. But I'm going to switch the focus to my Cintiq so we get plenty of drawing space up here. And let's see, I'll just... I'll stay on Doc 1 and I'll hide everything. And I might wind up using Magma Studio as a class tool tonight, but we'll see. I've been having like on and off problems with it. So, okay to Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds. Starting And now. I almost forgot. Yeah, okay, good. I'm streaming live. That's good. Okay. Good. We're all good to go. All right, so... To start start this on the first pose. This one's a vignetted pose, so do it as you will. This is just warm up time right now, so you can just loosen up and get get in gear. There might not be enough room to do these in Magma Studios, <laughs> so you might wanna so you might wanna do these on your own dock. We're gonna probably we might use Magma Studio for some teaching aid stuff tonight, but I don't know just yet. And we, these are very kind of rhythm line sort of things. These are two minute poses. I'm gonna be doing a combination of figure invention to warm up and uh, pose uh, pose studies from what's on screen.
today's subject was going to be extrapolation, but I decided we're going to be focused on actions for today, and uh, we'll save extrapolation either for next week or for next session. I think today we'll be focused on action. That just feels right to focus on for today. Oh, finally someone not using Photoshop. Yeah, I don't have anything against Photoshop, but Clip Studio. Clip Studio is just better. No. I may start using Photoshop some more in the future. I have it, but I just don't use it. It's really weird. So uh, I want to show you real quick what I did for my, part of my warm-ups today. That's also why I'm probably not going to be doing... Well, I'm going to be doing these poses too. But uh, let me show you what I did for my warm-ups today. So there's this document. I did this this morning as my first thing I did this morning to warm up. Some quick kind of skeletal figure drills. Simplified skeletons with freehand, freehand 3D a little bit. And uh, also some like gesture rhythm forms and stuff. And let's see here. And then I did this. I did this in under an hour. This is 225 poses. All the poses that are in the figure drawing mix that you're seeing on screen right now. I did this in under an hour. 225 poses in less than an hour. And uh... This is all line of action studies, basically. Line of action and gen, like, kind of loose gesture studies. So we're going to talk a little bit more about this. Because this is uh, how to start wrapping your brain a little bit around action and uh, intention. But anyway, we'll be getting more into that later. That's a really crunchy, crunchy pose right there. Sometimes these images get really crunchy. You have to excuse all that a little bit sometimes. It's a good pose. It's just it's a bit of there's a bit of um, there's a bit of crust around the edges of this one. So you might see me using this thing an awful lot. Um, this is a kind of a um, simplified head that I've started using lately because it feels right for me. It's just pretty much just like a egg shape for the head, basically, with like this little kind of center line and like wedge shape for the, like the front of the brow to the nose or something like that so I can tell head direction sometimes I'll put like a side plane of the head this kind of crash test dummy side plane like if you put a, to put a box around the head it might look something like this But like as an example, like here's me just quickly blocking in the head for this figure, for example. Some rhythm lines going. I just want like this kind of I just want like to do like line of action study for this one because I'm just getting warmed up.
Let's get like a quick floor grid there. Maybe I can add some volume to the body section a little bit. All right, so let's see, action, action. One of the things we're gonna be covering tonight is this principle right here of an active force and a reactive mass right here. The arrow right there is an active force pushing into the reactive mass. Here's an example of that kind of that principle happening on a torso right here. Well first off, you get kind of a line of action that's kind of like pulling up through the figure like this. But then like this torso is twisting. And so you get this kind of bend here at the side here that's acting on the torso right here. So this leg that's coming up here, it's got an active action that's pushing up on it. Get this other leg down here. Like this leg might have pushed down to, to like lift off the rest of the body or something. Like the maybe maybe like just the tip of the toes are on the floor down below off camera. But if you understand how to activate and deactivate masses of the body, you can start inventing or changing poses. Like, I'm sort of riffing off this guy a little bit to play with him to push body over this way. Maybe turn his head that way. Hips tilting like this, the shoulders tilted like that. Maybe lift his foot up off the floor a little bit more. Back there, foreshorten. I'm going to raise this guy's arms up even higher than how he has. So I'm making the active force pushing his arms up greater than what I'm looking at. So if, if you start thinking in these terms, then you can repose the figure however you want, or the gesture of the figure however you want. I just decided I wanted him to raise his arms even more up. I could have done something else if I wanted to. But when you look at a pose, you should start training yourself to think of it as a living thing that you can do, that you can alter and change. It's not a static thing that you're trying to copy all the time necessarily. You got to think about it fourth dimensionally and third dimensionally. Today is we're emphasizing the fourth dimensional end of things, but 3D does come into play because at its core, like remember that Sakuga stuff I was playing before class? Like Sakuga animation at its core is gesture drawing in, th in 3D space, uh, but moving fourth dimensionally. Or creating the illusion of moving fourth dimensionally. Is it worth it? I mean, just tracing the line of action photos? Well, that's not tracing the line of action photos. That's trying to find it, or for yourself, 
or figure out what feels good as the line of action for you. Doesn't this, uh, doesn't necessarily mean it's correct or not or not. But if you can like if you can describe a pose with like just like a single line like this or, or this is not a single line this is several lines like you could maybe describe this pose like this or actually let's try this like that like there i just basically described like the basic kind of idea of this pose with that maybe you could add in like some secondary lines like that too but yeah if you're able to like put the intentionality of the pose into just a few lines, then uh, you can use that to drive or modify what you want to do with the pose. Also, did everyone see the big announcement that Valve had? There's a Dota anime series coming out. And yeah, it's, I saw that. Yeah. With Dragon Knight. I thought it was from, a yeah, from the makers of the Vault. choice for a first character. Yeah, from several of the people who made who made, created the uh, the Netflix Voltron. I haven't played Dota in years, but I am kind of excited. What I'm looking for in a series like that is I'm hoping for a lot of, like, very Valve's... Like, I'm hoping, like, some of Valve's writers got involved with that. Um, I'm, lo I'm, hoping, I'm looking to... I'm looking to hopefully see, like, the Valve... The Valve sense of humor in the, in the thing more, more, more than anything else. Which yeah, is present in Dota, for sure. Uh, I hope it doesn't treat itself just like another generic fantasy show. It's hard to say at this stage, but it looks like they're probably going to like get something really special out of it. I mean, it's by like the um, it's by the Voltron creators. And they did not really make the Voltron Netflix and a Netflix show a generic show. It played, I mean, it played to genre tropes, but, like, they brought a lot of, like, individuality to the characters and stuff. This page is getting mighty Good crowded. No, I haven't watched it yet, the Voltron show. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I was wondering... Did it, did you share the reference fault uh, reference file we used to do the line of action study? No, but I've got it handy, so I can I can just upload it after this break, or after uh, during the next break or whatever. I mean, like honestly, oh. yeah, you don't need that file to do it. You can just you like images yourself. In fact, sure. I encourage people to do that. In fact, I had a question about that as well. I was wondering if you knew any resources uh, to find uh, like actions to reference, but not like uh, very expressive actions, more like day-to-day uh, -day actions that... Just start just start searching for poses on Pinterest. You can maybe just search by, for, by subject on like Google Image Search or Pinterest and try to find photos like if you just want people at like a coffee shop sitting around or if you just want sitting standing sitting poses to start looking for people seated or things like that uh i mean just gotta start hunting hunting for them it's not that hard to find these poses uh what you're gonna really want to hunt for t in the, like i'm gonna i'm actually gonna be starting to use a lot more paid image packs not not on my stream but for my own personal practice because uh, a lot of them are like created by artists for artists, so they have really well lit poses that uh, that are really good, really useful for artists. And also, um, a lot of those image packs have like a lot of multiple photographs of the same model in the same costume, 
which is uh, really something important to do in your studies as a figure, uh, your studies in figure drawing, um, to draw the same model a whole bunch in quick, some kind of quick sketch succession. Because it helps you kind of develop a better sense of like how this particular person or character works in 3D space, or it lets you take different cracks at sort of trying to do it, to interpret the same person. Sure. That's uh, the concept also of the bodies in motion uh, website I yes. sent a couple of days ago. Yeah, which I which I totally want to sign up for the paid version of in the future. Like I'm definitely going to be down with using that site pretty extensively. So right now I'm not necessarily following the model, but I will be doing some of that too. So I'm trying to think about invented action a lot more lately. I'm still looking at the model, but I'm not specifically following the action that the model's taking. Like there's bits and pieces of some of the some of what's happening to the figure that go into these that that's influencing what I'm drawing a bit. But I'll like go back and forth between uh, doing studies of the model as I'm getting warmed up and uh, great. Hope the autosave hasn't froze on me again. There we go. I better close some of these extra files once I get a little bit further in here because it's going to make the autosave recovery get really ch chugged like this. But I wanted to keep them open to kind of show people what I've been up to a little bit. Maybe I should close some of these. Yeah, I'll close these ones. Been open way too long. Yeah, that's from last few days ago. What's this? That's some stiff warm ups, I think. Oh, that was good. Oh yeah, that was the demon stuff I did. Yeah. Anyway, close that up. Close that down for later. Anyway, yeah. Um, I'm gonna be trying to insert more Mike Matisse Force type stuff later in the week. It wasn't really the focus today, because today I was mainly like vibing to Samurai Champloo and some other things. But there are there are some ideas that um, of Mike Batisi's stuff that we're gonna touch on a little bit today. Okay, Google, stop. Okay, so I'm going to bring up Samurai Champloo stuff so we can have that ready to go. There we go. Okay, this classic shot right here. Mugen's breakdancing, uh, Mugen's famous breakdancing, uh, breakdancing disarm move right there. <laughs> and I love how, like, on the cut, like, here, the sword, uh, like, uh, the sword, like, spinning off kind of mimics uh, Mugen's spin. I 
But yeah, Samurai Champion is a great series to look at for like just kind of loose, like seeing how to loosen up, really, with animating. Uh, I'd love to see if I can find some rough animation. Rough animation, Samurai. I don't think there's a lot of it archived though. But let's see if we can find some. You can find you can find some from like Space Dandy and stuff. But here we go. Well, here's some Genga drawings, but I don't think you're gonna find any gifs of it. These are a little bit more tied down, I think, but you can see like a lot of raw energy in these. Let's see if we can find some other good examples in here. It's a bunch of animation model roughs, I think. Those are really cool though, down there. Anyway, I'm showing these to kind of like give a sense of like how to kind of loosen up because like if you look, really look at these drawings and stuff, they are like not stiff. They're not trying to make them like manicured to a character model and stuff, at least not like the first early passes. Uh, some of them, they, you, you get kind of like a little bit more of a sense that they did sort of make it to that. But these are, a little, these are quite a bit more tied down. I think they did even more rougher drawings of these before those. But, um, these are very heavy, like, Samurai Champloo's animation is very heavily gesture-driven. And, uh, you can, see, you can see how that plays out and, like, um, how loose and, fl uh, loose and fluid a lot of shots in the show are. A lot of the action shots. Here we go. Let's see if we can find some more gifts. That's not much. Like, ideally, I'd like to find some rough animation in motion from Samurai Champloo, but failing that, uh, I know that Blade of the Immortal has some uh, archived footage that would be good to look at of rough animation. And uh, I know that, let's see, uh, Sword of the Stranger has a lot of rough animation. That's really great to look at. First off, let's first off look at the GIF here of the rough animation. No, no, not the, not the rough animation, like the finished animation right here. I actually may air this tomorrow since we're kind of on a samurai movie kick right now. I might air another Kurosawa film too while I'm at it. Uh, but let's see. Uh... The timer for the figure is supposed to be going on right now or is it a break going on right break. now? Break. Break, oh, okay, break, and the break, figure. and also this is this this is like, so I feel that I'm leaving I'm leaving the figure the figures going in case people want to keep drawing. Oh, okay. But I do suggest taking a break and like paying attention to uh, to what I'm doing. But it's up to anyone here. Like some people are still kind of not quite so warmed up. So I just want to give people a chance to kind of get a little drawing mileage in while I'm bringing up some inspirational material of covering today so th this is cleaned up animation right here this is like all this is not the roughs this is like cleaned up tied down stuff before it gets set off to inks basically um or the digital inkers uh this is uh this is of course this is very much rough animation right here so uh about this uh i want to show i want to direct you to my buddy to nico pantoja Who's got, oh, actually, his uh, thing actually just came up on YouTube right away, so that's good. So, uh, Toniko Pantoja has a really good video, really good video series on solid draw, improving your solid drawing and animation and approaching full figure animation. Uh, drawing figures, bass technique for animation, yeah. There's also these, I think, but... My last drawing. So, let's see here. Uh, 
See if we can find the video that I'm looking for for this. So, uh, okay, now that's that's. What's his gesture drawing little... video? We said we can find the video on his approaching full figure animation solve drawing. Let's see here. I'm looking for his shorthand. I think this is it, right here. Yeah, yeah, this is it. Okay, so uh, he's got this lineup sheet right here that he did of like a bunch of like shorthand figures. The these and this is not, by no means is this limited to these, but whoops. But if you take a look at these, like, and I do recommend watching this video. It's called "Approaching Full Figure Animation: Finding Your Shorthand Style" by Tanika Pantoja. Um, and watch these videos in general because they're really helpful and good. Um, but yeah, like, uh, you can see like some a lot of what I draw and a lot of what I do in my figure drawing um, classes is very similar to a lot of how these guys are drawn. Because the idea being, uh, you take uh, you take like stuff like this, and then you like work it up and turn it into this. Basically, like you start with like really, really you concentrate on you're concentrating on the motion, so it has to be rough. Um, you want to have the ability to like take it to this, of course, but you start with stuff like this, and actually even stuff rougher than this in some cases. But yeah, like this kind of really these different like shorthand approaches to the figure and stuff lets you cut down on details so you can just concentrate on motion basically and that's kind of what we're practicing today this is a we're practicing shorthand for um for animation and for storyboarding or for comics or anything really but mainly for animation because i am an animator and also for storyboarding but toniko is showing off here basically like essentially what's going on here um is this is a shorthand figure right here shorthand figure used for action animation and he's he's using a similar idea here with this little sword sword attack that the demonstration that he's doing and he's, he gives like different examples of, the, of this kind of like how to utilize these in here Yeah, the one that I tend to favor lately is, uh... I, I tend to favor the, the this one right here, C1, but I'm trying to kind of jump around between different things. You can hybridize your own sort of thing. There's also one that he didn't mention here called the Tornado, which I've been using a little bit. Uh, there, there, there's other approaches besides these. In addition to these, there's also, like, um, with certain character designs, there are sometimes little signifiers built into the character that you can use as part of the shorthand for certain aspects and stuff like a no shape or a no shape that sticks out particularly prominently that's used to kind of just aim the head or like i don't know some other kind of particular identifying feature that would make sense to put in a rough uh, but can i put yeah. some input space there yeah, yeah. Uh, oh it's yeah. you yeah, it is yeah. me. Hello. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is Maxi, who I should actually defer to because they actually work in the anim in the anime industry right here. So feel free to speak up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want to input. Use whatever you is comfortable with you. Yes. If you find out find yourself having trouble trying to do the an anime approach or something a bit more. Uh, a bit more mm -hmm. simpler, but might be complex. If, if you find yourself having too much trouble, you can you can don't uh, don't ever be afraid to just use legit stick figures. <laughs> yeah, I, like a lot of my friends, a lot of my coworkers, colleagues, they still use stick figures for anime work. You know, even our storyboards, even the directors who work on on even like the top directors still mm -hmm. use stick figures for the storyboards and stuff. You know, so don't be afraid to just derive these stick figures. I use stick figures even now. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. so. So, yeah. yeah. So then, you know, it just, you know, because um, after you use stick figures, you kind of graduate to do more and more and more, you know, don't be afraid, you know, but if you want to jump in, go ahead, but understand if you if you feel frustrated and you don't think you can continue to, to even, to, to, you know, um, tackle mm -hmm. 
those, those straight aheads and stuff, then you know, be just don't be afraid to use stick figures. <laughs> yeah. Use whatever. Yeah. Use whatever's comfortable. Okay. Space dead back to you. Yes. Uh, and on that note, uh, this uh, another thing that can help kind of clear out the noise in your brain is doing this right here, like this kind of line of action study stuff. Where this is like a single simple line to describe the figure, and you do like you can do these as thirty second poses. Uh, and you can do them in like 20 minute, 20 to 25 minute chunks of like 30 second poses like these. You just get like a single line down. You, you want to think about the pose and stuff. You can get like a, a, you can get some secondary lines in there. You can design shapes and stuff. You can do drawovers like what I did. I do the, I started to get in a good rhythm with these. I was doing these in about five or 10 seconds each for some of them. Um, but when you're, when you're like, doing, when you're like studying, when you're like studying from a, like a pose set like this. 30 seconds is the time you want to shoot for for doing these. But yeah, uh, that right there, this this method right here is from the Alex Wu Schoolism class uh, that we've actually been using as a, as an inspira as like a inspirational guide book for a lot of stuff I've been doing in here. And this is on the Schoolism site where uh, I do recommend checking out his course. Uh, Alex Wu is a Pixar figure drawing instructor, and he's got a really, really good course that um, starts with starts with this kind of stuff and like moves up into shape, and then moves up into like silhouette and um, story and stuff. Next week, uh, I don't know if we're going to be covering it this week, but we're going to be covering one of the other topics that he talks about, which is called extrapolation, which uh, I would want to get into, but that's going to kind of steal focus from what we're doing this evening, so. We're gonna get back to. Uh, I'm going to put on a new, maybe a new set of figure poses. Give me a second. Actually, I think these ones are fine. Just give me a sec. I just want to make sure that everything's saved so I can close down this. I want to close these extra huge ass files that I have before we start another figure drawing set. All right, so we'll get started on another set right now. Uh, okay, Google, set timer for 20 minutes, 30 seconds. 20 minutes and 30 seconds, and that's starting now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just try to like jump right in with like just getting dirty. I'm going to be using a kind of a... Uh, this is actually this is actually one of the figure one of the approaches that Tonico had on here. This is the uh, I, I, I don't forget what he called it, but this is kind of like a contour um, massing in the shapes approach, basically, where you um, you basically like you you don't pick up the pencil off, off the paper very much, and you just try to get like an overall impression of the figure, and you actually don't even really look very much at what you're drawing. You do a little bit, but you can do these blind too. But you just try to get like a quick rough impression of the figure and kind of mass it in a little bit. This one's starting to look a little bit like a silhouette drawing to me. I'm gonna maybe try to do some invented figures since I did that one really quickly. I normally would like be drawing a lot more figures today, but like I've got like a really good rhythm going because I did a lot of warm up earlier today. So I'm feeling like I kind of want to bounce from one thing to the next tonight to increase my range, basically. So some things to look out for. Um, keep in mind that these figures that you're doing, um, they are not, you shouldn't be thinking of them as being completely like 2D shapes. Like they are they're almost kind of like bendy 3D wires that are moving through face, uh, moving through space. So when you're when you're drawing them, you want to think about how it's bending through space. Like when I drew this, for example, just now, I was thinking, oh, this line is moving towards us, and this line is moving away from us. Even though it's not built into that, I know that that's happening there. And then like I can, and then like with that in mind, I could like go back in and I could say like, oh, this is closer, so it's larger. Then this turns down here. And it gets smaller as it goes away from us. And so on. So other stuff too, like you can use 
wrapping lines over a form, kind of going off to a fake vanishing point. Somewhere over there, if you know anything about perspective, there's a fake vanishing point over there. And I wouldn't even like, I would like visualize that. I wouldn't even like necessarily draw a vanishing point in. And you can do like a floor grid, plant the feet on, and you get this, you get a uh, figure in there that is sort of following somewhat, some of the rules of 3D form and is occupying 3D space. And likewise, this spine that I kind of drew in here is curving inside of 3D space and stuff. It's bending down around, coming down into the dish of the pelvis down here. We get the underside of the rib cage right there. I'm just trying to give like an overview of like a lot of the stuff that kind of goes is going through my head when I'm doing this stuff. Like this is like stuff that becomes instinctive over the course of just like practicing a lot. And uh just vibing basically. Like you can actually observe it happening a lot in like like Samurai Champloo's animation, which we were looking at a lot earlier today when we when we were marathoning the show. But there's other stuff too. I've been talking this last week about like how to correlate the limbs to get to each other. One of these techniques is this thing that I call the jump rope, where you can draw a line between limbs to correlate them to each other. Like you should think about the relationship of one hand versus the relationship to the other hand here. You can do that with the knees also. And of course, you can also do that with the with the feet. Either when the feet are up in the air, you can use that you can draw like a jump rope that's on, a virtual jump rope that's like on the floor and kind of works a little bit like a sh like a ground shadow to sort of like imply where the 3D space of the floor is. So other tricks too, other depth cues like uh, if something is further away from you, it would be smaller. If something is closer than, to you, it'll be larger. And you can really push that and play with that if you like, like just when you're doing the gesture drawings and stuff and trying, you can like really exaggerate that stuff. And look at that, like I can combine the ideas like here, like here I'm using the jump rope right here between the knees. Using the jump rope between the feet there. Using a curvy ground plane right here, back here. Maybe erase this inside the legs there. Another idea is darken the limb that's further away. That's a common one. Another one is also, of course, to darken the limb that's closer, like in the really close foreground. Uh, let's see, another another stuff for 3D depth cues. Landmarks on the body, like corners of the rib cage, like right here. You can use those as kind of like tracking lines for your, for your freehand perspective. Like this guy's kind of turning up away from us, I think, a bit. But yeah. And let's see here. Is there anything else I can go over as far as this is? I'm, I'm covering mainly like 3D stuff right now. Just as a quick splash overview before we get more into action, because this this stuff could should be like in the back of your head as you're making the action. Because remember, you always want for like 3D forms or 3D depth or in mind when you're creating action and animation in gesture like a feeling of three of a feeling of like the gesture occupying three-dimensional space should be should be in the back of your head when you're um when you're making your gestures they aren't they aren't flat 2d shapes and with that in mind about thinking three-dimensionally. 
now you want to start thinking fourth dimensionally and that is when we start moving into thinking about action so action is about a lot of things well first off it is about thinking fourth dimensionally but a single pose can summarize action i mean we've seen that in comics Mo comics are motionless picture entertainment basically and but they imply they imply an illusion of motion often in a single image or when in when shown in sequence with other images and stuff but you don't get the illusion of persistence of vision that you do with film with comics so in a single image or in a sequence of Im in a sequence of comic panels you have to you have to make help you have to cause the reader to sup suspend their disbelief and make them feel like what they're looking at is some kind of physical action or acting or mood for that matter that's happening on the page but we're talking action today so we'll be focused on like action more physical stuff the performance is also going to be part of it of course because performance also helps sell it and that's important to the characters but the physical act the physical act of the action is our main focus take this pose for example right here uh, this is a photograph this is not a drawing um, so we we inherently look at it and we know like we can kind of tell because we have eyes that are made to break down these things and read a human body in motion in in space uh we can understand what what's happening there so how do you create an illusion of that same action happening on paper in a single image well you have to think about it a little bit fourth dimensionally it isn't just about freezing that moment in time. You got to think about what happened in the before, the before and after of that pose. Like, where did, what happened like before this moment here? What's where and what is going to happen after this moment here? Like, what path are her arms traveling? What direction is her body going? What direction is this person going in? You can kind of guesstimate about uh, that stuff, like. It doesn't have to be perfect for something like this, uh, but you can get some pretty good ideas and start thinking in that headspace from looking at these about what happened. Like this guy right here, like you can kind of sort of sense where his path about where his path of travel was here, and what might have been happening with his legs before as they tuck up into space and as he t tilts and turns back his arm and his torso to get it just like just the right moment to hit the ball so you know like uh athletes train relentlessly like this guy right here to be able to hit the ball at just the right apex moment of contact uh for this ball that he couldn't predict where it would come from um it's something that was dropped in on him from the other team that he's playing against during a game and he has to respond to it but he's trained to react to these sorts of things. So his body's going through like these instinctive calculations of trying to find just the right moment and the right sweet spot to uh, control the ball and take control of the game, therefore. Well, we artists, we go through a, sa a similar thought process when we're trying to find that sweet spot for action. And that also means what that, that we have to train pretty relentlessly too in order to start hitting that sweet spot. So every time you're doing these, you're kind of developing your flex, your mental and physical flexibility for being able to understand and read action and find where that sweet spot is. And you should, it's not going to be like set in stone where that is for the action. Um, because there's a lot of variation of what could be right or wrong. But you want to like kind of cultivate uh cultivate that kind of living sense of like where the sweet spot is to capture like the right moment for like the action or the idea that you want to express you want to get better you want to get more in tune with being able to flexibly express those ideas and actions 
And once you start getting a sense of that, you can start like inventing stuff. Like, let's say you're, let's say you are an animator on a show that's very much like Samurai Champloo, for example. Like you use live action reference and stuff, but you do, you do a lot of improvisation, a lot of, um, you do a lot of invention. You do pre-planning of store, uh, of, uh, pre-planning of, of course for the actual animation, but there'd be a lot of improvisation that goes into that, into the pre-planning, like the thumbnails and the just the loose gestural drawings and playing off of whatever live-action reference that you or other uh, other performers that you might be working with were t uh, took, or footage that you found that you're, u that you're utilizing for the performance. But yeah, Maxi, do you have anything anything to add? Oh, yo, uh, yeah, I just got back. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, I, I'm I'm mainly just like talking about like the stuff I'm trying to turn over in my head as I start like wrapping my head around this stuff. Uh, when I came back, I just heard you heard you blabber on about Samurai Champloo. So what's up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> using like you're saying something about using reference and stuff. So like. Uh... I was talking, well, okay, let me just uh, do a quick recap. I was talking about, I was like using that uh, a volleyball player right, jumping up into space, trying to hit that action, that sweet spot of the action in order to, you know, uh, take control of the game. And he has to, he's trained his body to like be able to respond flexibly to like whatever the other team throws at him in those games or respond to a ball coming in at him to find that right peak moment of where to hit, where to hit the ball and control it the way he wants to out of the air jumping jumping through the air to hit it in a volleyball game and i was comparing it to like that's kind of what we have to go through as animators and artists when we're trying to understand action like we can we kind of like flexibly have to develop a sense of like where that where the sweet spot of what we're trying to, to go for and communicate in the action is oh yeah okay and uh, sim sympathizing with athletes is a great way to start getting a better sense of action in animation. Because athletes go through the same thought process that, well, that we have to go through uh, in the course of understanding action. Like a athletes, uh, athletes performing, uh, performing athletes are almost kind of like fellow travelers in a weird way. <laughs> you could say it's like performing artists and stuff too <laughs> oh yeah definitely oh no definitely actors and performers dancers yeah. for sure absolutely now they're, they're fellow travelers and in many cases collaborators because like there's a lot of them that do collaborate with animators especially in the video games industry oh i guess one thing i'm looking at the references that's on uh that's on that's on the uh the stream mm -hmm. uh where, where the guy's doing like kicking stuff like that you know you know how like even one of ethan becker's videos about like oh don't take uh photo reference take video reference right you know you want mm -hmm. to have like uh motion in your oh you yeah want to have motion right you know um one thing that that that's nice about these photos is that like they're great photos right they're they're taking pictures of like things that are that like are in the are part in motion but but since it's the, the capture rate is so good that it, there's no motion blur in these captures. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. but sometimes you need no. You, sometimes you need those motion blurs so you can tell the direction of motion. And yeah. Yeah. Motion. Absolutely. <laughs> there's there's some some of that's in here too. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's good. That's good. But yeah, I mean, like the other thing is like it, it, you can also develop a better sense of action by looking at say like a pose like this and trying to figure out what did the model do to get into that, and if they didn't do that, what can I do to invent? um what can i do to invent or, or riff off this pose and that's another thing that's another thing another reason why i've kind of chosen samurai champloo to kind of look at because samurai champloo is a series whose e whose core ethos is about imp improvising and improvisation oh, so yeah, that's true. so kind of vibing with a similar sort of idea is a good is a good approach to take when trying to understand action, you 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 it doesn't have it doesn't have to be perfect. You can invent, you can play with it, you can have fun with it. Yep. Mm -hmm. 
So what's the lesson for today? Um, because I know you're talking about uh the proper uh, what what's the best um sketches to use for 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 we're trying to to work faster or working in a different uh, technique. That was more kind of uh, introductory stuff. Like uh, what we're mainly covering today is we're trying to like trying to pay attention to action. So that means. Like, I, I did basically like a recap of some of the stuff we've been doing for the last couple weeks of like uh, thinking about things in 2D and 3D. And now I want to see people sort of take that stuff. And that's it's OK for newcomers who come here, too. You'll, you, you're, you're, you'll be you'll be just fine here, too. Just just vibe with it, basically. But um, but basically, I want people to kind of take some of the ideas that we went over on that stuff that I kind of did a recap on. And then I want them to try to like double down on it and like go beyond it and really really think about action like uh think about like the physicality of certain actions and like the before and after and like how you can push it and make an action more interesting or something like what did this guy do beforehand maybe he before he went into that pose maybe he like did like this really wide anticipation where he spread his arms out really wide and before he did like a power pose like stomp maybe he stomped on the ground beforehand or something or and uh and before he stepped in that makes him like that would make him like really more intimidating for this pose and maybe like the intensity of his gaze kind of sort of makes me think that and stuff like uh that might not be what he actually did but that's what that's the action that I'm inventing in my head of what he might have done. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it okay for me to stream? Absolutely. All right, let me take out all these NDA stuff off. My yeah. <laughs> what do you? Uh, or actually, I could put you on. Um, if you're, would you be? Well, we'll see. I'm also got Magma Studio up, so I can maybe make like a Magma Studio pane for you, or something if you want to play with that. And then, I can and then I can have that on screen instead of streaming your stream. Oh, shoot. Uh, let's see. Uh, how does that work? <laughs> it's it's just a drawing app that you do using Google Chrome. Oh, like Google Chrome? Yeah. <gasps> it's what's it's uh, on it's what's on screen right now in the uh, right up here. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess I'll have my own screen up. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. My, my answer yeah, yeah. is decent enough. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to show you it sometime off when we're offline because it's a really oh, yeah, it's a really fun tool to use. It's got yeah. a few issues where it stopped reading registering my my mouse or otherwise I'd be using it for this class stream. Oh. Uh, but um, I'm gonna talk. To, uh, one of the devs on on it has actually joined our Discord, and I, I'll be able to ask him about um, maybe there's a workaround for that issue. Yes, it's for, yeah. So what I'll probably talk about. Um, because since we're talking about action and how to interpret action and stuff, uh, okay, Google, uh, stop. Sorry, tell the timer to stop. Okay, Google, set oh, timer okay. for seven minutes. Seven minutes starting now. I'll just that's like break timer. I'll just leave the I'll leave the poses going for people. But uh, yeah, what were you saying? So, oh, how how, how long do you have? Uh, oh, just for uh, so I know. How how long do you have left for this for this class? Well, this class is going on for another two hours. Oh, okay, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, let's see. Um, so then for me, uh, I'm not going to do the reference. I'm going to talk about something else. Uh, yeah, so, sure. So let's see. Um, uh, this, ha this happened earlier. Uh, the, so someone had this, had this like, concern earlier um, that, I, that, that uh, I helped address. And I was like, you know, I might as well share it with everybody else. Right? So then... Um, so what happened is that he, the, the, this artist asked, what, um, what, a, uh, what do I start with first? Sometimes I see people start with the body. Sometimes I see people start with the head, drawing the head and stuff like that, you know? Uh, even when it comes to these references, right, you know? Or these, these uh, sketches, like these quick sketches, right, you know? Oh, real quick. Um, I, just usually... want, I just want to point to people. Uh, there's people watching on Twitch and people watching on Discord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put Maxi on screen and on, uh, Twi on Twitch also. But if you want to see just his screen, you can just watch him directly on Discord. Oh, uh, yeah. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. So then, um, so some people don't know what to start with, right? You know. Um, so then, um, uh, uh, sometimes like he, so this artist said that sometimes he does he um he feels like he he draws the head, 
like it it it, it's, it looks um it, it works but then sometimes he, uh, it doesn't work and he draws it with the body but then he's kind of confused of what he should be doing since he's kind of conflicted with, with both um so um it also depends on how you on what you're doing too right so then for example i'm just using stick figures because i'm kind of lazy <laughs> uh um Ugh, no, that's not, that's not like, right. Um, uh, so with um, so sometimes it depends on uh, where you start off. Uh, 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 what, what's the what's the um, intent of the drawing, right? You know? so I'm gonna draw the person doing like a, a kick in the in the sky. So so instead of drawing, because because sometimes like I don't know. Okay, sorry, I'm not. I did not. Re I did not rehearse this. <laughs> that's so, fine. Yeah. So um. So it depends on the intent of the drawing, or what's the action, what's the leading, the leading drive of this, of the action, right? You know. So then, um, I'm just gonna draw a flat orthographic perspective of of a person doing like a high kick, right? You know. So instead of drawing the, because you can start with whatever you want, but for me, I'm gonna draw with the hip, you know, because where the hip is is essentially. Um, or either with a spine, torso, or hip, right? So then, because sometimes when you draw the torso, or sometimes when you draw the head, and then you draw your torso afterwards, you end up um, um, having a larger head than you, than you anticipated, right, you know? Or sometimes you have a um, a uh, um, a smaller body than your torso, right, you know? Or, because you have resizing issues, right? Because where you're not looking at the, you're not looking at the, the big picture, you're looking at like, you know, the individual area you're drawing. Um, um, so then, one thing that I kind of do to uh, to to kind of do my best to to over to was it look past that is to look at the at what's the what's the most what's the what's it, um, the action right you know? and the action here and the more, the most complex part about it here is that the, the is that with this drawing I'm doing which is a kick is. Um, is the hips right the hips is supposed to be in a specific way to show the um the 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 feet like kicking in in the direction it needs to right now so then uh, i think i'm doing the anatomy-esque approach it's like a very simple anatomy um if uh yeah so then um so yeah so i'm doing the the, the hips first to kind of show and the legs to show that this is the main action point right you know but then then everything else is like compensating to to improve mm -hmm. the motion of the kick right you know um so let's see oh, uh, very important so, you, are, you are letting the shapes drive it but like the, the line of action is built into those shapes just to be clear oh, yeah, like yeah, like yeah. like the someone who's practiced line of action enough can like uh can like figure out how to arrange like 3d shapes like that in a way that yeah. it follows a line of action basically yeah yeah so then boom and like, i guess like kind of like that like the line of action mm -hmm. and i'm gonna draw the arm doing this and the other arm doing you know this you know kind of help that rotation aspect because essentially what this person is doing is uh is um is a uh oh uh, this yeah, the, what the person is doing is a um, is a was it a roundhouse kick? Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, but I will tell you guys an interesting tidbit about. Am I thinking right? Oh, here. Yeah. Interesting tidbit. So you can say this is a roundhouse kick, right? You so let me bring track this dude over here. Come on, dude. Let's, mm -hmm. let's go. We call him dude. So then it's called B duplicate pad. Bring it up here. So then. So the reason why I'm saying um, the the rest of the 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 drawing compensates for this action, right? You know. Mm -hmm. um, um, ooh, wait. Yeah. So the, re the reason why I'm saying this uh, is compensating for the action is to where uh, if I were to draw his arms, oops, his arm here, his shoulders here. His other shoulder is like back here, you know, hiding behind his shoulder. And you see his back, his spine is like that, you know, going, going like this. Right, so that's where his spine is at. You know, wait, that might be too much. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, that's too much. <laughs> this shoulder is here. This, this is his chest kind of going down like that, you know? Because he's twisting his body back to... to... Oh, wait, wait, no. This is a roundhouse. This is a roundhouse, so his arm... Shoulder is here. Uh, here. Sorry, I'm not the best artist in the world. <laughs> so... So then. Oh, okay, Google, stop. We'll go over a little bit over time for this demo, this demonstration, though. So then, oh, I kind of messed up kind of the torso a bit. Oh, uh, kind of looks weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, so this is like, uh, so this is like a roundhouse kick. So then you kind of have like the arm, kind of like uh, in this position, right? You know. But I actually drew the, the legs more of like a uh, hook kick. So that was my intent in the first place. Yeah. So, yeah. so then, so this is like where the, this is like your hands to compensate for this motion, right? You know? So then, like this foot would be essentially, you know, we had speed lines. We're going this way, right? You know? Um, uh, probably change this foot to more of a, um, this to kind of help compensate for the motion. Just like that, and that would be like a, that would be like you know, um, a hook mm -hmm. kick. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what is it? Uh, roundhouse kick. And then for this one, the arms would be kind of like backwards now, um, where the back is the back. You can see the back of the of the body, arms kind of like doing this to kind of um, help the rotation of the 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 feet. You know, so same speed lines here. You know. Uh, but now it's going from uh, towards the camera then back um and then then you have neck here with the head kind of looking back at at trying to trying to look back to see where where, the, where it's hitting you know so it's kind of the same pose kind of the same you know motion like kind of the same like like angle i guess or whatever it's called um and then but with this i guess you would say it's the same line of action right <laughs> but then with the different intent of the of the motion right so yeah uh then uh yeah i'm not sure what else to say <laughs> mm -hmm. i'm trying to invent an action right now kind of riffing on what you did a little bit where yeah. uh well i've got a different pose than what it's doing but i'm like starting with like this is like my, this is the before pose, and then I'm trying to like do like a action pose where the back is facing the audience. There's like a strong tucked arm back here, kind of maybe like a power stance sort of thing. Where the character's doing this. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, Oops. Oh. Maybe the character's arm is like this. Like this, like really pressed forward. But we need like more stability in that upper torso, I think. Like like a power stance sort of thing. Yeah. Back of the body right. here, shoulder is really flexing. So I'm emphasizing like the shoulder blades there for maybe raise the arm up a bit. Just kind of improvising something to see what happens. That's all. Yeah. So, oh uh, yeah. So, if you look at my screen. This is like, this is the reference I was trying to do. <laughs> I was trying to recreate this, but oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I did it better before. I I explained this before, but <laughs> mm -hmm. and I was just yeah, yeah. So this is like this is a better better uh, example. So you have the same kind of line of action, but then it's a different motion. You know? 
um, it's just different posing to compensate for it, you know. Uh, and then, yeah. So then the legs are kind of similar. He changed the motion blur. He changed all the stuff, right? You know, because mm-hmm. sometimes you don't know, you don't, you don't, you can't really tell where where things are if it's just like a image with no motion blur or so, right? So then you can tell with the arm position, you know, and how the arm rotates, how the arm helps the motion move, you know. I see a lot of people who try doing like. Um, let me open up. Trying. Well, I see people try to 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 do like cool tri- uh, cool flips and stuff like that, right? You know, but then, um, but then it turns out not looking as well as they would like it to be. Um, uh, let me go ahead and go. so let's see. So with this animation I did, uh, oops, oops. I used like an anatomy esque ref- uh, anatomy esque sketch for it. Um, the way, um, so then, so you have like what is it? Uh, a lot of um, the same arm positioning, right? You know, so every time because uh, this character mainly does hook kicks all uh, like uh, like a uh, um, yeah um, reverse hook kicks all the time, right? You know, um, so then that's, that's so here's a hook here. He does a hook a hook kick here. And then the next one, he does another hook kick over here, um, over here, and he does another hook kick over here. And you see that they're all the same pose essentially, right? You know, you have his arm, um, uh, his have his arm always uh, pointing back. Yeah, his arm is always pointing back, right? His arm is always pointing this way, and his foot's always going this way, right? You know, um, essentially same thing here. Um, boom like there arms placing this way foot's going this way right so the reason why you do that obviously if you were to do a hook kick yourself you know you want to twist your body the opposite direction to kind of comp- to help help your um your foot um go that way right you know um and then but then here he does a um a uh, a uh, roundhouse kick essentially or a tornado kick right so he he, he does a flip twist and then does a tornado kick um his arm is facing this way while his foot is going this way but if you but then if you were to oh no this arm is going back sorry this arm is going back um the 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 direction of the direction his arm is moving goes back um even though it's not really clearly shown um, because it's like a really complicated kick um and and this was going this way right you know so then um same thing with here you have um this hand going back while this foot is going forward. You have this foot going forward as this hand is going back. Right? right? So yeah. And this one going this way, and this one going uh this way and stuff. There's all these rotation rotation actions and stuff that goes into all these moves, you know? Because essentially they're you know they, yeah, they're all essentially the same kick, but with just different different um what is it? Uh uh um, um, scenarios or situations that allows them to do this, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So switches, hook. Um, that hook goes into um, master. This is called a master scoot, where you, where you kind of um, use that momentum of your leg to kick your feet up. Then he does like a like a backflip esque, um, lands. He doesn't touch his foot on the ground. He uses that momentum of his foot still um, still rotating and then flings himself up then when he flings himself up he tucks his both his legs in to do a twist and he also throws his arm uh, across to actually to 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 to, to help the twist then he he then when he does a twist he pops his hands out, out his pops his, he pops his arm out and his legs out and then then swings that leg into a kick tucks again tucks tucks his arm letting his legs swing to 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 th- so he can throw the next hook kick right you know and he tucks his leg and his and his and throws his arm to throw to throw a lot of power into that hook into that hook kick then uses that momentum to kind of to kind of like um keeps his foot out to 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 keep his momentum um going so he when he lands on his foot 
um, he can throw his arm around, twist, and then do another hook kick at, um, um, during the landing sequence. And it's finished off with like that that nice pose, right? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Yeah. With the pretty, with the glorious hair. <laughs> I was like, how much is the end this? You know, I want and I want I either ended it cool with the cool like fighting pose, but I'm like, you know, I'll just do this. And then with great the hair. Like, yeah, I'll just like I'll just like, make it yeah. grow hair and pass out of his head. That could be Quite a dude. Amazing. I mean, it could be a dude with just a fantastic hair. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this guy did a little bit of groin in the second pose here, but uh, that I drew, but um, can I just resize him a bit? Yeah. And I'm not sure which way, space that would you consider this drawing from reference? Because I didn't use a reference when I did this. I done it before. Where, well, it's action um, drawing. Uh, I mean, like, a, if you studied reference, like, it's one thing to draw from reference, another thing to study or to pull from your visual library of reference you've studied. I yeah, mean, like, a, it's the same, it's kind of all the same thing. I mean, like, whatever gets you to the finish line. Yeah, because when I made this, I, uh, I, I, I knew how, how the motions and everything worked, right? Um, so I didn't. I, I I remember it's a, it's the same move that I um that um that from from the from the from the people that that um, I ref that I like to reference from, um. But I didn't look at the reference. Um. I just knew how how the and, and also it's not the right camera angle either. It's just I just used a flat um a flat plane and drew the, drew this character on it. So it would it be yeah, considered yeah. reference or would it be considered not well no no it's part of it like you understand the first you study the reference to understand the action and then you then you can like sh do it from a different angle or do it with a different character on it or change with change the action and design something new that's the point of it really like the point of reference is to like sometimes you do directly copy of it and other times you invent based on it or invent a similar idea based on it like it really depends on whatever you're trying to do and stuff. Hmm. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. You can see at some points, um, I use a, uh, I sometimes if it's a bit complicated of a pose, I draw the torsos and the legs mm -hmm. um, separate, right? You know. I like their own they're they're like their own little like um 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 shape right you know and then there are some points where i just combine everything together because it's kind of easy simple to draw those shapes you know um then like here um this is like a simple torso simple leg and stuff i don't really need to make something complicated but like this where he's like where usually the body's overlapping each other i would uh i would i would draw make it a bit more complex you know kind of like um, yeah. But this heart, this pose here, transitioning from this pose to this pose was like the most complicated part, because you know how do you transition from like like a hook kick like this and go into like a backflip, right? You know, <laughs> I'm like, whoa, that's weird, right? You know, so that's what the master scoot does. Right? This this move is called a master scoot, where you throw your leg behind yourself, kicking yourself up and doing a backflip, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, so it's where. where 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 I use my 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 motion blur. It is great to think of that motion as uh, think of that motion as a scoop, like yeah. you're, you're scooping yourself yeah. up with your momentum. Yeah, 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 yeah. Off you the really ground. Yeah. So, yeah. So then, then let's see. This arm goes all the way around here, mm -hmm. and then this one goes straight down this way. Like that. Yeah. So then yourself to kind of then swing your legs way up around you know yeah <laughs> yeah essentially yeah now all of you all of you should be doing exactly this at home class in real life right now <laughs> it's very hard it's so easy <laughs> this is a hard move to do in real life <laughs> yeah do it while holding your holding your laptop or your cintiq while you're following the class it's very important you not take your eyes off the class the whole time when you're doing this yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, that's the other thing like uh like you don't have to like if you can't do a flip or if you can't do a splits but you have to like act out a scene for reference or something uh you just kind of imitate an action that's like similar to it without doing it like i, I like i'll see a lot of animators when they 
are shooting reference of themselves like performing a front flip or a back flip that you know they sure as hell can't do uh you'll see them like kind of like jump forward and kind of like m sort of mime a little bit of the action themselves like keeping the momentum going as if they did the thing uh and like sort of pretended that they, they did it or something or they find some other kind of way to sort of cheat it or whatever It's a way to it's a way to shoot reference of just about anything without injuring yourself. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, what was the time earlier? Oh yeah, yeah. About um the type of sketches that oh the type of kind of sketches I used when I was making this. Yeah. So then yeah, so then anything that has a kind of complex motion I use the or, or, or like kind of body parts overlapping each other, I try to just use a line to kind of tell to say, oh yeah, this is kind of like complex, so I want to tell this information more better using lines mm -hmm. and such. And and this thigh is like kind of pushing into his his torso, his torso, right? You know, it's not like his leg is like sticking out like this, right? Or it's kind of clear that his his foot sticking out, right? You know, but here his thigh is kind of pushing into his um into his torso, right? You know, like it's not like you know, we're to kind of pushing into the torso, kind mm -hmm. of like. Where the crotch is at, you know, um, trying to convey that motion properly, and you know, um, yeah. <laughs> so then, you know, yeah, trying to convey that motion properly, and you know, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. I think I definitely want to experiment with using more of a volumetric approach for uh, my roughs, for sure. Yeah. Um, Volumetric approach really helps with uh, with being able to understand. Um, well, cause, so, because when you're actually because because for animation specifically, um, you want to draw your character you know, correct. Right? So, well, yeah, the, yeah. The, 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 if it's like in the you need it to be inherently in the ballpark of what yeah. of what the uh, character model is and stuff, especially yeah. in, like anime productions where things are moving blindly blindingly fast. At the very least, like, uh, let me look it back. Let me look back, actually, at the sort of the stranger thing I had on. Did I get? Yeah, do I still have that? Yeah, I think I do. Oh, here. Oh, no, it was a GIF on um, the internet. Here it is. Okay. There we go. Yeah, so this is like, uh, yeah, this is like the more kind of like shorthand figure man approach with our, where it's kind of like a somewhat of a boxy figure, but like uh, still pretty simple. But yeah, they inherently have to do these do do these more than like the stick figure kind of approach because they gotta work really quickly. They were also using a lot of live action reference for this too, if I recall. So they actually did shoot like live action fight choreography and stuff. Yep. Don't know if the animators did. I'm sure the animators like acted out poses and stuff to kind of get the rhythm yeah. going and stuff. But I would be interested in. Uh, do you know if you know of any making ofs about about sort of the stranger about their approach to the animation of the film? I'd be keen to check those out. Definitely want to screen this tomorrow in the Discord. I think it'd be a blast. Yeah. Since I since I made this pretty complicated, I'll just I'll just start I'll just draw start drawing like the form. Mm -hmm. or the was it the make it into like was the toy or something like that? Um, to kind of help people understand like what, like my like how how I can simplify my thing um, and and understand it myself without having yeah, to do yeah. these lines anymore. I could probably make something like this work, but I'd have to do like another pass to add the volumes to get and make sure the volumes get on model. But as long as like the, the like the um the stick figure is kind of in proportion right and maybe like the tor like the torso should at least be a volume that's kind of working with the character, I think. Yeah. Because that's a big important driver of the proportions of the character when you're uh when you're speeding along a production. Like, how did the people that use stick figures that you've uh, that you've uh, 
observed and worked with and used them your colleagues oh uh because um if you guys know what hume's dojo is like um you guys oh, seen, like, oh the... yeah this the, that yeah that's something yeah. some entirely i'm talking about like production stuff not uh oh no 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 it's the same thing i was, I was gonna lead to that okay and, uh, go ahead so essentially uh um um um, we used to create the same way we used when we did it when we when we were all uh, when we were all doing stick figure fights on 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 the internet, right? You know, the uh. stick page, or whatever. You see like animator versus you know animations stuff like that. You know, all this all that stuff, right? You know, mm -hmm. um, essentially, uh, um, it's the same it's the same idea. You know, it's just that um, instead of drawing stick figures like this anymore, you know, like like that, you know. We now draw stick figures more complex, you know, like like. Well, for me, I like, actually. A little bit more like what Tonika showed, like something along the lines of yeah, like, exactly, this exactly. this kind of guy, or like, yeah, you know? yeah, that one. Yeah, so we draw a stick figure more complex, and you just draw a kick over, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the same technique, just yeah, with just a two, there's exactly two more lines. That's it. <laughs> yeah, the two more lines, of course, are for the tilt of the hips and the tilts of the shoulders. Yeah, and I think uh. For for my for me when I when I when I started doing that I actually didn't draw the the shoulders or the or the, mm -hmm. or the waist you know I actually just drew the floaty space I just, yeah I just yeah just, no I've seen that too space. actually and that's yeah 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 but then you know um um if you wanna if you, you because here's the thing here's the beautiful thing about construction right the beautiful thing about construction is that doesn't no matter how simple it is doesn't no matter how complex it is and it doesn't matter what your art style is. It does not matter what your art style is, because essentially, if you know how to construct your character, if you know all that stuff, right, mm -hmm. um, you have all the art styles in the world. Right? Yeah. Um, yep. Um, because that's the thing about an anime, right? Like or animation or anime, Japanese anime for us animators, right? You know, um, we have to know every single art style in the world because that's our job you know is to create other people's characters to create like, um, to work on a show every month with different art styles all the time it doesn't matter what uh um what art style we we, we have because that's not our is art it's not our job to have an art style it's our job to know how to mimic art styles mm -hmm. so then so what's the best way to do that is with construction understanding construction understanding um, the basics of construction so you can manipulate the the character to have um the anatomy of another show you know of another of another design you know mm -hmm. um, that's how you and, get and, yeah, that's how you get stuff like people who worked on like space dandy also work on also worked on like okay ko and motor city yeah. and yeah and uh tiny tune adventures and stuff yeah Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, that's exactly mm -hmm. right. No. Yeah, because every single character um, um, has some sort of. Um, like, they all follow the same logic of human anatomy, just just altered slightly. You know, um, and and and. Oh, and uh, to... for people here, I've just I'm just uh, since we're just vibing right now, just like feel free to like. Uh, feel free to follow you all along to your own like two minute posing pace to the reference that's on screen if you want to keep doing that. I'm going to be continually doing figure drawing exercises right here while Maxi, uh, Maxi in a rare opportunity has dropped in to talk to us about animation stuff, yeah. which is related to the action stuff that we're doing today. Yeah, sorry, I'm like, I'm like, uh, sorry, I'm not here as often. I'm like, so yeah, busy. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I should be working on something right now, but I'm like, I'm tired. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm taking a detour. Yeah, yeah just trying to help out. And yeah. We have some ulterior motives too, so. <laughs> <laughs> what are those ulterior motives? Just like, get some extra practice in? Uh, uh, or, or show I'll off for folks? <laughs> I'll tell you later. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, not like that. Just, just, I guess, I guess you can say show off. But, uh, yeah, that's fine. But, I, I, but I think you should. I'll tell you later. If you're, th if you're thinking of doing your own stream, I'd be happy to help oh, wait, promote that for sure. I'll just, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just DM you. <laughs> yeah. Okay.
I would be I would be a viewer of a maxi animation stream for sure. <laughs> Yeah, that's the reason why. I DM'd you. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. I hope, so, I hope yeah. our artists make streams. Yo, go ahead, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no sorry. sorry. Oh, I was interested. You got it. Yeah. Oh, I don't like much more to say. I, I was kind of vibing with what you were up to, what you're doing. And I'm just doing like figure invention. You're thinking about, thinking about that stuff and thinking about different actions and stuff. Yeah. Like, I. I like how fluent I'm getting with like this particular puppet. Like I feel like this guy, this bendy kind of Disney, Disney, the Disney puppet, with the bendy wires and the simple face and stuff that I've been using a lot. I've gotten super fluent with him. So uh, I feel like I could take on just about anything with it, and I'm gonna probably start trying to do that pretty soon. But we'll see. Like in in my animation and storyboarding, I mean. Okay. Yeah, I want to start getting more like the sense of the uh, more volumetric figures for my shorthand too, because that uh, is also an essential tool to have uh, have available to me a little bit more fluently. Here we go. I'm using like a method called I'm using like a tornado light method that's sort of helping me with the volumes a bit right now. Where I just do like very very light. I don't have, like I don't I'm not, I'm not gonna wear out my hand by doing like a ridiculous amount of like the tunnel tornado thing. So for those who don't know, the tornado is basically like okay, let me get let me do a tornado figure real quick. It's a uh, it's where you do like a bunch of like twisty circles like a spiral circle thing and you that describes the direction that things are going and like here's a foreshortened forearm right there pointing towards us here's a foreshortened thigh pointing towards us here's a calf going downwards away from us here's a thigh that's going out parallel to us here's a calf that's a little bit turned away from us but going down here here's a torso that's like turning up at us about here. So I darken this side of the misty lines. But the tornado is basically like, um, it's a way to kind of wrap your head around the, vol the volume and direction of a figure. But it's not really necessary to draw like that scribbly every time for every figure you do, but you can do a bunch of these and kind of pull your brain into thinking about things three-dimensionally and volumetrically. So, um, like, what I'm doing here, in order to kind of like help help me sort of understand the figure in 3D space, I've done like a little light thing right here, like with some light kind of little wrap wrap over lines to kind of determine what direction things are pointing in 3D space. Like this thigh is coming a little bit towards us, that thigh is going parallel away, parallel to us, and then I see like a top plane of this cube of the knee, kind of stuff like that. But yeah, uh, something like this might be a way to kind of help me sort of key into thinking volumetrically using my little stick man as my shorthand. Like, it's not like I can't work up the... I understand enough about volumes to be able to work these up into figures. I'm just trying to come up with, like, something that I can use very quickly in shorthand, you know, for animating and stuff. And, ha and have it keep the energy of the, um, of this, basically. What's that you got there? Oh, that, me? That there's a 3D grid right there. Uh, oh yeah, it's 3D grid. Uh, I want to I want to sure I get the composition uh, when I when I'm drawing my characters because I'm because I'm drawing the torso up with these characters so or the yeah the torso of these characters I don't want to uh, I don't want to mess up later on. So, yeah. 
let's see. So, let me draw a character. Oh, and also make sure you have your folders all correct. So if you're, you're going to be animating, I'm going to be animating um, a small and small exchange. <laughs> two characters doing fighting and stuff. Your folders you're talking about, like in Clip Studio? Your Clip yeah. Studio folders, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I should actually go. I should actually run down a demonstration of how to use Clip Studio for animation again sometime. Oh yeah, I forgot you did. You did uh, pick it up and do some stuff with it, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've got like a whole bunch of stuff from um, uh, um, our Exposito and uh, their Clip Studio pipeline stuff. Oh yeah, Marty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've gone over some of it. I want to go over more of it so I can have that. Uh, I can maybe just start using that uh, over the course of the figure drawing classes. Just like maybe just uh, maybe I can do what I did one class, which is like um, my animations, my animation frames are just di different like collections of some of the figures that I've done or something mm. for the session. Right now I'm thinking about 3D form and volume a little bit, but I'm gonna try to like sort of marry this with some action. Let's see here. So let's take a look at these guys right here. So maybe try a loose improvised pose of jumping through space. I'm playing with like repositioning the arms and stuff because like I'm drawing so loosely I can have the freedom to adjust and change that. And sometimes when you're searching for your act for your pose, you'll like go over it a bunch. And then like the page will wind up looking almost kind of like a a, a 4D sketch almost. Where there's like multiple versions of the limbs moving in different directions and stuff. These are kind of roughing in where you like and placing things out. Or you get them kind of tied down in the ballpark of where what 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 feels good. Like I started with the leg here and I pushed it down to here. Foot's about there. So the calf. So this character's kind of pushing up and off. Like that. I'm traveling up up and forward this way. The soldier shoulders kind of uh the soldiers that the shoulder the I'm getting mush mouth right now. This shoulder is kind of like uh going up a bit going up with the momentum of the body a bit. That's just kind of an improvised action pose there. Let's try another one. I'll try a forward lunge with a character with their arms kind of sweeping like this, which is very similar to like some kind of ballet-ish poses that I've been seeing in some of these figure drawing sessions we've been doing. So the character like coming forward like this with a leg thrust way out in front of them. get a leg going in the back like that the path this character is taking is something along these lines like 
here. They may be heading to land somewhere here. Got a back leg back there. If I wanted to, I could change this pose a bit to. Let's see, uh, put some weapons in their hands, perhaps, like, maybe. A couple of axes in each hand. This one's further back, so it's smaller. Throwing a little shorthand expression on the face there. So I'll put the heel out because this person's not as graceful as the ballet pose I had in mind initially. Let's fatten up the arms a bit. Let everybody know I'm doing this without reference, so it's very difficult. Do a little like before you're trying to invent like an, a punch, basically. What you're trying to invent like a, a punch, basically, right? Uh, uh, not a punch, an exchange, like an actual fight scene. Oh, like quite, quite so a trading round. blows, okay. Yeah, so I'm trying to, yeah, I'm trying to create my own choreography right now. And uh, I, because <laughs> you guys watch Trash Taste, um, um, the, an the the anime podcast. Um, no, but I like uh, the name. I'm sold based on the name. <laughs> yeah, they they talk they talk about anime. It's maybe just anime talk, right? And, and just random random funny, anime, like you know, stuff. Um, but they said something. They said something that, that was like a, that's a great point in anime, right? You know. Um, where they're talking about how anime fights work, right? You know, especially in comic books, right? You know, uh, and it happens in in anime too, right? You know, uh, in the actual shows, which I which I which I totally agree with, right? You know, um, where in anime, um, uh, and, and in manga, right? You know, in comic books and stuff, um, the reason why anime fights are just a bunch of like it's like one cool move. Right, you know, or a few small moves, and to lead up to one big move, but then, then, but that's it. Right, you know, and that's it. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, um, that's the same thing in manga too, and it transitions to anime. Where in anime, it's, you know, it's the same thing, right? It's, it's one cool big move and this bunch of talking within it, right? You know, <laughs> um, um, and then, uh, then. Essentially, anime is just animated manga panels, right? You know, or comic book panels, right? You know, um, to where how do you create really good choreography, like like movie style choreograph choreography in uh, in in animation, um, or in anime specifically, um, uh, to kind of bypass like you know uh, the con the, the the manga panel feel to it. Mm -hmm. um, so essentially, uh, it's already done uh, with uh, live action and and, and uh, with live action and other shows like that right now. Um, uh, so uh, essentially, you just take the same approach and apply it to animation. And people may think it's hard because it's rarely seen, right? People think that oh, you can't do it because you know um, no one's done it, right? You know, but you know it, it has been done before. You know, it's been done with with. Uh, with um, with this uh, show called Hitori no Shida, and um, my friend Chris or Yen CDM worked on it, and um, uh, and uh, it has it has like you know like like quality martial arts and action fighting, in it, right, you know, um, to where uh, how do you even how do you even how would they even do that? You know, why why would you do something like that? It's so it's so different than how you would see in other. It shows, like, you know, even Naruto has like really cool fight scenes that you rarely ever see at all in, in other shows, right? You know, um, mm -hmm. uh, Scissor like, Scissor Seven kind of has like almost it's almost like a non-stop yeah. fight scene. 
Yeah. Yeah. And I think there was this one other other anime show that, that has like really decent like choreography too. Right. You know? Um so it seems like there's not enough uh um um uh, but wait, but but when you look at Naruto, it's actually kind of uh kind of um uh, it's all written out too, right? You know, it's all kind of written out. It's like there's no natural feel to these fight scenes, right? You know, um, so then um, the reason why they feel kind of written out because they're you obviously have to hit certain points, right? You know, um, where you have to say uh, um, character one has um, needs to do uh, on character character needs to fight um, um, uh, feel like he's losing, but then win at the end, right? You know, or, or something happens and he wins mm-hmm. at the end, right? You know. Or and all stuff, right, you know? There's no small problem solving within fighting, right, you know. You don't see that. You don't see these small problem solving in fighting, you know. Um, in, in in anime fights in general, right. Mm-hmm. But in like Jackie Chan films and all that stuff, you know, you see all these problem solving, small problem solving in fighting, which in fighting, which is cool, you know. Um, you have it rare in some some martial arts anime too. Um, I think I forgot what it's called, but there's this anime with this guy in the blue shirt. He's fighting this like really buff lady. And um and they have like really cool choreography in their fighting, you know. Small small problem solving, you know. Oh, um, you're on the floor. You have to you have to do something. And you you do this. You kind of do it. And it's storytelling within the. With buff within blue the lady. Action. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's just a. Um, was this a French anime? I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Okay. I, I've only I've only seen the animations. Uh, I haven't really watched the animes at all. Or oh, oh, was this a. Uh... So uh, was it a, a girl fighting a big giant buff buff la- blue lady monster? Uh, it's, it's it's a guy in a blue shirt fighting. It's it's a hand to combat. It's a guy in a blue shirt fighting a uh, fighting a uh, uh, fighting fighting a girl who's who's like an assassin or something like that. Okay, well if anyone can identify what what Joe's talking about, uh, feel free to speak up. Yeah, I'll probably look it up later. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Also, ch- <laughs> check out the check out the pose I just sketched. Uh, I'm doing the I'm gonna hit a, hit another hit another motherfucker with a fu- with a motherfucker pose right now. Oh, okay. Grabbing the leg, grabbing someone by the leg and f- getting and flinging them, or swinging or getting ready to swing them. Wait, like, smack smack says, uh, uh, do we do just do we just keep drawing poses or? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like, uh, we're kind of detouring right now because Maxie's talking about animation stuff, and it's uh. Yeah. Good, good to kind of pick up on these tips but for now folks like just kind of vibe with what we're doing right now like just uh just like draw yeah you keep trying the poses take breaks as you need we're going to kind of keep it loose tonight it's going to be a little less formal than usual yeah so every time i come in we always detour <laughs> that's no that's fine i mean like uh well if you we're only, we're only detouring because you're coming in special like if uh if you it would probably be a little bit more we'd have like if we if he came in more frequently we'd probably have like more of a plan or something but it's yeah, not sorry. it's not a big no like, it's <laughs> it's not a big deal like I, i'm fine with these detours as uh with the uh with the detours for like different guests guesty people come in i think this is yeah. fine i mean we, we did a lot of like observation stuff of like samurai champloo today off stream and this kind of complements what we were doing yeah keep going yeah so yeah so yeah so you guys do whatever you want <laughs> so i'm just gonna talk about what i want to do here so actually i'm gonna do stick figure just to make it easier and faster mm-hmm. um because um uh or kind of a mix mix of you um so i want to keep these characters real close i don't want them moving around away from screen because i don't want to be where like uh um um, um, you see how an anime, like in, in anime, it's really interesting how, how anime fights work. Where if, where sometimes where you see characters do punches, and then um, they they do punches and then they block it, but then they fly away because of the, of the punch, right? You know. And then there's like there's like it's like very rare to see um, actual exchanges in fights. Right, you know, exchanges are essentially a bunch of blocks and dodges. And grabs and then counter grabs and counter attacks mm-hmm. and yeah and it's, it's just a bunch of that no one gets hit in these exchanges right, you know um 
that's that's one thing that Dragon Ball cheats at, right? Dragon Ball cheats at by having like the, the you know like they're like you know they're, it's the same like five frames repeating yeah, over yeah. and over again. They're in front of each other just doing a bunch of punches and stuff, you know, punches and kicks, you know. That's how they cheat it, right? They they cheat it doing that, right? You know. But then I go. love it because in um in uh <laughs> oh no no that oh yeah 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 it's kind of like that, right? That's cool, right? You know? Yeah, this Those one's like, this cool. one's a little bit more elaborate because they actually pace it out a bit. Yeah, yeah. It, well, it is the... a loop, but it, they're they're actually doing a little bit more of what you're talking about without, che- yeah, without yeah, cheating yeah. it as much in this particular one. Yeah, but well, I'm, I'm I know what you. In the, this, in the no, this is this is more yeah, this is more like the cheating ones, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> those are the cheating ones, right? Yeah, um, it's good, right? It's it's storytelling, right? You know, they're they're storytelling it by making it cheap. Um, mm-hmm. Doing the same thing, it looks cool because you know to the average viewer, you know they're doing these cool exchanges, and all. And at the end of the day, you just say that and you're like, cool, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's cool, right? you know. But then I like to get technical with it, you right? know. I like to be like, oh, he's gonna do these this attack, and they're gonna like uh, do this to block it, and all that stuff, right? you know. Nobody gets hit, right? You know, um, and it's it's amazing, you know, it's amazing seeing all this stuff, right? You know? um, oh, this uh, one actually has more of it in it, just because it's like Goku just. Just uh, easily blocking Cell's sword with each of the attacks. Mm. <laughs> Even though it's like it's oh. just one arm that he's an- that, that that's animated. So I'm gonna have to throw a punch here. Um, block it like this. Okay, they're both coming at each other. Um, um, oh, yeah, can I... I do rather like this one. How like they're, like literally they're just okay. They're they're just skidding across the ground with like a a, a smoke loop. It's kind of tracking ahead of them a little bit. And uh, and uh, yeah, the, yeah. Ba- the I think the smoke is just like on a two or three frame cycle, and it's just kind of moving around and back and forth. And then the background is just on a loop. So this is like a this is like this is the anime equivalent of the uh, Hanna Barbera running in place thing with the background <laughs> loop happening. But this is a little more interesting. This kind of feels like they're kind of yeah. This feels like they're having they're they're like I don't, I don't I mean it feels like they're skidding across the ground and stuff. Moving through the fight, what, what the? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's all like it's all cool storytelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then I like to get technical with it, with uh, with like like them actually doing cool stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. But you know they do that because like it's the style, you know. It's just, it's a Dragon Ball style, you know. Oops. Mm-hmm. All 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 it, all it is um um is a uh, um uh. uh you know, it's just, it's, but essentially, what it is is, is like it's, it's the... in like um, regular martial arts kung fu stuff too. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is that? Yeah, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's a new grounds thing. But yeah. Uh, and also, a lot of it is like it's adapted from like a Kira Toriyama's take on the. Con- they were trying to like mimic the feel. Uh, he was trying to mimic the feeling of like the Chinese martial arts, Hong Kong. Uh, yeah kung fu movies that he was inspired by for making dragon ball and stuff yeah. and uh and s- developed his own style and visual language for the comics for it yeah. which uh, got adapted of course by bird studios into like how do we adapt this for animation and uh came up with some very interesting solutions it's essentially like just it's like rapid like these loops that we're looking at right now is basically like rapid fire versions of what would be like still still panels in the comic, basically. Yeah. I actually kind of want to create one of these loops for an experiment. It's it's cool because like uh, the, the, there's a lot more there, like the the actual drawing the actual drawings that go into it do a lot to kind of really sell the impact of the exchange or the uh, or like the severity of the exchange. The, their arms and limbs also become like very blade like. A lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. 
hope everybody can understand what's going mm -hmm. on here. <laughs> yeah. I kind of feel like creating a Dragon Ball loop, a Dragon Ball loop would be like a, a weekly assignment challenge type thing, a Dragon Ball fight loop. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. I would say they're they're easy to draw. Um, uh, I just hope everybody. Uh, I just uh, they're easy to draw. Yeah, they're they're fun to do because you know it's just cool poses. That's that's it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there's a lot more that can be done with them. They're kind of like, they kind of like the instant ramen of <laughs> of of uh, action posing uh, or action posing technique shorthand for like a for like a f uh, quick filler loop scene of a fight. Yeah. Yeah, but then um, yeah, because so, essentially it's like a, well, if you look at the, the, the if, you, if it's like an actual um, show. Uh, it's like uh, it's like oh um um character uh, um a hero enters scene um uh, says something then bad guy enters scene haha you will uh, say something right you know then then they're like um insert fight scene right? <laughs> just like insert fight scene and then at the end um on bad guys on the ground and, and heroes like haha you have been defeated right you know and then and uh, and that's the thing right <laughs> that's like wait wait, wait what insert fight scene what are you supposed to do there you know mm -hmm. and then, it could be anything, right? It could be where like, or right, just one punching is on the floor, right? You know, and then they're like, they're like, ah, oh, you've been defeated, you know. Or you can be like, insert fight scene. Um, um, a character has character is is adept at fighting. Um, um, this other character is like really good at fighting too. How does a character win? He he does this to win, right? You know, or he's he was he's or he's simply just better, right? You know, um, yeah. Uh, we're seeing your whole screen, not only the clips you so be careful not to show anything you don't want us to see. Oh yeah, thanks again. Uh, uh, uh Ganima. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. I I'm making sure I don't have anything. No, under nothing here NDA. NDA. <laughs> yeah, be careful. Just be careful yeah, about is, that. This is, this is NDA. This is just my folder part. Yeah. Uh. Oh wait. Oh shoot. Oh wait. Oh yeah. That that was the whole thing. <laughs> that was that was the thing. Oopsie. <laughs> we'll just cut that out of the broadcast or the, or the YouTube upload later. Ah, uh, okay. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I forgot that was it. <laughs> I forgot. I usually have everything on another screen up top. So, <laughs> so yeah. Also, uh, I guess I, I enjoy showing my whole screen because um, because uh, there uh, I, I like to show other stuff. Within here, uh, within that's not on this main screen. It's just kind of like change the switching it on and off and all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. The, this this first frame here is just a reference to the characters posing in size. So, yeah. Boom. That was a punch block. Um. Block. Block. Um. Then let's see. Hmm. Boom, boom, boom. Then I'll have this guy do a low punch. Lean forward a bit, because usually with these fight scenes, especially in Chinese uh, Chinese uh, fight scenes and stuff, um, um, where they're doing all these cool hand hand attacks and stuff like that, you know, mm -hmm. um, all their um, they keep their to, to to keep the camera from from shifting and stuff, um, um, yeah, to keep their their, their camera from shifting, um, um. Um, they keep the character standing in one place and having doing um, some moves, right? In um, in anime fights, um, they uh, in, in, and sometimes in animation, it's kind of hard to convey that because of how dynamic they want the movement and the camera to be, right? You know, um, but it's okay to do it uh, to do it in this sense because you know it's it's, it's kind of it, it, um, you know um, it just it just it's just like it's cool to kind of mimic that you know in animation. Yeah, they do that in Dragon Ball and. And I'm doing a more complex version of actual choreography in, in here, you know. Yeah. So then, boom, 
kind of keeping the torso, like keeping the, the hips and stuff in place, only moving the torso and the positioning of the legs. Um, yeah. Let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> my, yeah, on one of my tabs, I think uh, yeah, the YouTube picked it up. On one of my tabs, it's, it has a, an email to, uh, to, 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 production, to, produ to production managers, so I'm just cut oh. that out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Looking for gifts that show off a little bit of what you're talking about. Oh, there, there's some of that going on here. This little fan fight that I just found. Bit, a bit more grappling going on here, but yeah, it's definitely going on. Let's see. It's a lot of like people getting people getting hit, but I'm looking for stuff that shows off like the exchange of blows. The characters kind of going doing the back and forth thing. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 that's essentially the exchange of blows. Nobody gets hit, and uh, and so, uh, exchange of blows is different. If you're if you're uh, blows are, are where you, people are getting hit. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, um, exchanges is where, where no matter what you do, no one's gonna hit, right? You know? Yeah. Um, but sometimes you get like those where there's exchanges and there's small hits uh, within those mm -hmm. exchanges, right? You know? Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Here's a good one. Let's see. Oh yeah, yeah. It's such a those. It's such a those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Those, those are those are. It, it, you know, even though like they look really funny, you know. Um, but then. Uh, but it, 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 it's, it's just cool to see, you know, like, uh, um, just to, oh, uh, how, like, the, their style, right? You know, their mm -hmm. fighting style, right? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Just a little bit more. Yeah, there's some more right there. That was a very small exchange, but yeah, it's there. Let's see. Is that there? Blocking a low punch. What, the... what would you do after that? There we go. That one's pretty alright. These fighters seem a little exhausted. But yeah, it's, it's happening there. <laughs> Here's someone doing it with two, but he, yeah, he is actually making some blows too. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good. That's a good. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good, good, good. Uh, I always love creativity and fight. <laughs> yeah, literally, they're just like using his opponent, the 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 force of the of the screen left guy, to uh, slam the screen right guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's some there's some great storytelling with these kung fu fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're so good. <laughs> yeah, you don't yeah. really see that as much um, today. You know, um, like, you know, feel like Jackie Chan films and stuff. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, when you're designing the fight and the poses, you want to think about like what is the character communicating through the body and the posing that they uh, like. Like Mugen, for example, in uh, Samurai Champloo, like he communicates that he's a streetwise punk, and he just like improv he, like, his fighting style is just like all over the place, and it's really wild, and it's very breakdance, ba breakdance based, and stuff. Yeah. Um, he's an excellent example of that for sure. Like, and you can see, like, you, you can see what his mood is, and like how he's controlling the fight, the tempo of the fight, and what he's doing. Um, like you could come up with all kinds of st like personality-based approaches to what the character is doing, and also there's you can come up with creative, funny things that say a little bit about how the character thinks and how the, how the character is cleverly one-upping the villains or the antagonists or something like in that little exchange where he's using the force of the other dude to punch the other guy like you want to think <laughs> it isn't just like a blank just like a blank boring just like a couple people fighting there should there should be like some kind of story thing behind there about who's fighting each other and why or maybe there's some kind of clever twist on what's happening or something you know but at the same time, I mean, it's okay to just like, if you're doing an exercise yeah. or something, to try to kind of 
loosen up like the kind of what you're doing right now is, is almost kind of kind of what you're doing right now is a little bit like going to the art gym for anime for uh loosening up yeah. the character's bodies but you can you kind of use some of the body mechanics of that for something that might be more like cleverly planned out for for like a story for like a story beat or like a some kind of clever gimmick for the fight or something yeah <laughs> yep definitely uh let's see Ooh, these ones look good i like these stick i like these sketches that you did value these are these look good i'm gonna take a look uh in uh is it in um drawing corner yep there we go all right let's take yeah let's take a look at uh i haven't looked at these are lovely very nice Value, you're 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 doing great work. Uh, I would say that your your grids need some work though. That's that doesn't feel like it's it's going to a vanishing point. I would kind of watch oh. that a bit, but it does kind of feel like. It, but your chair feels a little better. I think the legs could be a little long through there. Oh, the legs on the chair, at the back chair could be a little longer. But other than that, like the skateboard is also doesn't really feel too 3D. But I'm not too worried about that because it's a small drawing. There's enough information there that it could be fixed. Whatever. I mean, there's just like little things. The, this guy actually does look like he's standing in 3D space. This character looks like they're standing in 3D space. Uh, that character, yeah, that, that character looks like the. You, you, I can almost kind of sense like the loop, like you do like a jump rope loop between the two feet a bit, and that would definitely feel like that they're standing in 3D space for sure. If I if I did that, you don't need to do that, but it definitely feels like it. Like that foot is down further down on the screen, and that f foot is further back, so that feels like it's further back on the screen. Yeah, you're you're wrapping your head around thinking about the on that page in particular. You're really showing off that you've are wrapping your head around the idea of thinking about the figure, the gestures in in 3D space, occupying 3D space, for sure. Yeah. So these are a little bit la lacking in confidence, but that's okay for like newer stuff. I see you trying to kind of imitate some of the things I'm playing with a little bit too, which is okay. Uh, try not to pick up my bad habits. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, just keep like playing with your confidence. And I do a lot of observation from figure, figure drawings. I would say like I'll watch a lot of drawing demonstrations of people who are way better than me too. And that'll help you more than watching me. Like uh, Proko, Proko has got a lot of videos yeah. of uh, tons of really amazing artists on their channel, in particular that really, that really you should pay more more attention to than me for uh, for taking things to the next for building more of your confidence for sure. Uh, let's see here, these are looking good. Gus has been killing it lately too. I see Gus is getting... Uh, I think Gus needs a little work on their grids, but overall these feel pretty volumetric. Uh, uh, Gus has gotten a better, more intuitive sense of like designing really pleasing to the eye abstract cartoon figures and stuff. Uh, this guy looks a little bit poorly balanced, I would say. I think this one... Uh, unless he's like jumping up from the floor forward, this guy could probably be balanced a little better. Um, some of these kind of start to flatten out a little bit like this back here but I see you do you are trying to curve the lines over the form and stuff in that um, I mean it's just it's, it's gonna take practice really but I do see you kind of wrestling mostly with the right things just keep pushing yourself don't be afraid don't be afraid to get messy I see you being very I see you being like clean and precious with these don't be afraid to get messy too uh, let's see yeah I'm gonna go I'm gonna skim back I'm gonna skim up through these these are looking like you looked at Mike Matisse's force, which is fantastic. Um, and that's a China marker, traditional newsprint. Good, good. Uh, let's see here. Let's just go back up through the rest of these that other people will be posting. Oh, this is my other stuff that I was sketching earlier today. Like while I was watching Sam Samurai Champloo and just improvising faces, kind of vibing with the art style of the show a little bit. Not like I said, I wasn't really trying to draw Lugan or any of the characters, but little bits and pieces of the characters made their way into the sketches. Anyway, so let's see here. This this person, I would say, concentrate on the line of action. Firstly, like it, like, I, you're definitely getting that in there, but I think that you need to concentrate on that quite a bit more and build up confidence in that 
before worrying about the extra detail because when you are I see when you are adding the other detail in like I don't think you quite know where to place things just yet so it's kind of um yeah, so it, so it uh so it doesn't really help you at this stage right now I would just just concentrate on paying really close attention to your line of action you can add so you can add secondary lines for the limbs and so on too but like kind of kind of what I was showing off in that demonstration earlier when I was doing the drawovers um, stuff is what I would want you to concentrate on let's see same same note here although this person it looks like they are they do have the right idea and some of these are working a little bit better on clo on closer glance some of the shapes are kind of getting a little confused there but this guy feels like he's starting to I'd say this person, both of these people need to be less timid with their drawing and be more... Yeah, uh, uh, I was feeling a little rip. rusty in this first drawings, this session. Yeah, no, I mean, that's fine. Uh, it, when I say they'd be less timid, that that means uh, just like, fuck it, dude, I'm just gonna... I don't care how messy it is, I'm just gonna... I'm gonna jump right... Yeah, and doom, doom. Yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Doom, uh, doom, uh, that is a, uh, doom, uh, doom of, um, <laughs> doom reacting to the, uh, the pro tip in the, in the, uh, Twitch chat, uh, pro tip, watch someone better than me. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, that's what most, most artists should say. <laughs> um, um, and I'm not a professional instructor, so I want people, I want you to look at people that are way better than me to learn. So you don't pick up on my bad habits because I'm still learning too. I can like. I can uh, convey information about ideas that I'm kind of vibing with and stuff, and hopefully there's some there's some good information that people will p pick up from me. But um, but I think that I think that uh, what'll help people more is that they don't get my op it, people who are kind of new to this stuff that are mainly just watching my videos or my channel or or whatever. Uh, I would say that you don't want to get myopia about what your what what your study habits are. You want to learn from people who are way fucking better than me uh for sure uh but like i but like i'm here for i'm here for encouraging people to stick to their pro stick to the program of their art gym basically like i'm still trying to figure this stuff out i'm still like i'm still figuring out like what i'm where i'm gonna go with this next like what's the next fate what's the next step with what i do with this you know The next log log uh, logical step for me seems to be like I should start like thinking about this stuff sequentially. So you're probably going to start seeing me use like the Clip Studio animation function a lot more during the class to kind of whet my appetite for that. I mean, that's always what the what the point of doing all this was like, so that I could create action for animation and storyboarding for me anyway. And also to a lesser extent, comics. Uh, Doom in Twitch chat says, "I got a picture with uh, I got a picture with the whole 3D spacing thing working hard. Uh, I wouldn't mind your input, but it's covered in masking fluid right now. Masking fluid. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, because you're trying to keep it from smearing." Yeah, yeah. Show it to me. Uh, show it to me later uh, when it dries or whatever. Um, especially if I'm around tomorrow, like you can post it when I'm in like drawing chat because I'm gonna be on tomorrow doing some more studying. You gotta go do the background. Okay. I really like these two right here. I think I want to do more with them. Like let's like, like lower opacity on them real quick. Anyway, do you got any any uh any insight about the punch uh the punch exchange that you're making there, Maxi? Oh, 
Let's see. It's more just chor- chor- uh, like because I haven't choreographed it in my head. I just, I just, I'm just trying to let the motion, uh, let, let the action kind of drive itself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, oh, what do I want to do? Should I have him do a low punch after? Uh, after I have this character here do a low punch after, mm-hmm. after this guy blocks this attack here, right? Because so, um he because he he goes for a low punch here, and then the guy blocks it. Right, the guy, this guy blocks it. Right, you know, this guy blocks it, but then, boom, the guy was like, "Oh, I was actually, I was actually gonna grab you instead." Right, you know, <laughs> he's like, "Oh, shoot, I shouldn't have blocked that." But then he pulls his hand away. You know, and he's gonna, he's gonna counter using this punch. Um, that's one thing in in uh, in, uh, in kung fu where they they're they're always letting go after grabbing something. You know, <laughs> mm-hmm. so yeah, so then you kind of kind of let that disbelief go go into the fighting. You know. So then he lets go, but then he goes for the punch, but he blocks it you know, with this hand moving this way. Then I'm like, okay, what's what's the next what's the next move, right? You know, because um, I want to keep this camera angle for a bit. You know, mm-hmm. I want to keep this camera angle for a bit. I don't want them to move their hips. I don't want them to do anything that has to make them move from their position, right? You know. So then, how do you do moves that like um, that that keeps you in the same position, keeps the character, you know, um, you know, yeah. So then, um, he has his body here. His legs, essentially, his legs like twisted this way. Now, if you, if I have to, if I were to draw his pose out, you know, um, if I were to draw his pose out, he's like this. Uh, oh, oh, boop, boop, boop. This is pose right now. Oh. Also, I'm thinking a little bit about like uh, I've seen like videos of uh, like uh, stuntmen and fight choreographers like creating the uh, designing these stunt scenes. Like those, 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 all those scenes like um, in those action films, they the the stunts and the choreography has to be designed. Like they're design, they design a uh, an exchange of blows. You'll see like you will often see like a couple of like uh, stuntmen or fight choreographers like trying to, like working together to improvise the scene sometimes you'll see actors who have been trained in this kind of stuff um inv- uh, invent and create a scene in collaboration with the like the stunt coordinators or stuff too it's really interesting to see footage of that like when they're just kind of like thinking oh, i do this and then i da 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 and then i hit that then i hit that and then how about if i do this yeah. and stuff like that <laughs> So yeah, so it's just fun doing all this stuff, you know. If you guys, you know, you can you know, just watch a bunch of, you know, just watch a bunch of kung fu movies, all that stuff, mm-hmm. or anything really to, to kind of do it. That's what that's what that's yeah. uh, how you invent dance moves too. How you dance, invent uh, dance. Yeah, yeah. Dance. Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, like yeah. there's a lot of uh, the same thing happens in, in dancing, uh, also in acting in general for that matter. But yeah. the same thing also happens in dancing, and it's like for like musical or dance performances yeah. where they invent. You'll see stuff like they either plan it out in advance, or they like uh, go on the set and they start like planning out. And it they they still it's still planned when they improvise, but they um but they sometimes like you'll see them riff on ideas that they have from being on the set and stuff sometimes. As long as it's like uh and and as long as it's like keeping in the spirit of whatever the story te- story beats are that they're trying to hit and stuff. But it's always really fascinating to me like oh the we have to keep in mind like uh we design we as animators have to design uh every every action that we make we design like the posing the attitude the acting that's going into it and we um we have to think like well, like designers of course when we're doing it uh and and stunt people and fight choreographers have to do the same thing um that same sort of uh same sort of mindset they are des- like those those stunts have to be the stunts and actions have to be designed like and that's a little bit what Maxie's kind of doing there he's sort of like well he's improvising right now um uh, but he's like does he's like kind of imp- doing an improvised uh, he's uh putting on his designer hat and uh thinking about like um what would this blow lead into that blow and so well you can go ahead and talk about it uh, some more yeah. you were just talking about <laughs> go ahead yeah so i'm so i'm trying to yeah so right now uh, uh yeah so like i said i didn't want i don't want to change their position too much 
um, but I'm having this guy push um, his hand to, to make him not be able to uh, to make him expose like his side right you know so then mm-hmm. so then he can go in and probably like hits because now he has his hand locked here right you know it's kind of hard to see kind of hard to tell he has his hand locked here and um, on his chest and he, and he needs to do something to push it all the way right, you know because uh, now he has this entire area of exposed his entire stomach exposed right now um, mm-hmm. So, um, but he does have advantage since his arm is extended out. This guy's arm extended out. It is hard to control control your body, your limbs, the more extended out they are, right? You know. So if you keep your hand close to your chest, obviously you, you won't be able to move your hand. If you try to pull your hand away, it's not. It's gonna be hard, right? You know. But if you hang your hand outwards, obviously it's kind of it's kind of easy to kind of move your limbs if your arm is extended, right? You know. So he may be able to push his arm into in, into his chest. Um, allows him to kind of come in to do something but he doesn't want him to come in so then he needs to um uh, um let's see so this is the promise all right so i'm like okay so he doesn't want to come in he needs to do something to to counter counter this move right you know counter what's going to kind of happen next right you know because uh, this is essentially like a setup right you now so so mm-hmm. yo initial punch block punch block um low punch to set up uh, to setting up to a grab to expose something then trying to punch but then block but then it's blocked so then now what do you want to do so retaliate by doing a but instead of, instead of attack instead of doing a punch to retaliate he tries to set to set up the next move right set up the next move by pushing his arm in um pushing it pushing his arm towards his chest so that he can come in for a um, for a uh, for a for a body shot or something like that to land a hit, but then but then he's not gonna let him do that. So he's gonna um, um, do something like because he have this hand ready to come in for a punch. He have this hand right here, ready, like like I'm preparing for that punch. And then oh okay, so they will have a block and a grab at the same time. So now we're gonna change the pose. He's gonna, cause now he can move his arm, move this guy's arm, however he wants to. He's gonna tilt his body back slightly. And now maybe this, maybe this doesn't work. Maybe I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm just gonna switch this out for something else. There you go. So then, so his hands here, blocking this low punch. And also, you don't want these punches to like. Like clearly not hit, right? You know, so then if so then for this first initial punch, you know, his punch probably like would hit hit him right here in the chest, but he has to block it, right? You know, then this punch obviously is gonna hit him in the head. You know, you don't want them to 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 actively you know miss you know miss their punch because they're too far away. You know, so then you have to have sometimes the body move out the way. But I'm keeping their their foot places plus foot places the same, just their torso is different. So then I'll have the fists here. Like almost hitting, almost hitting him, right? You know, um, boom. Um, I want the fist to kind of be straight. So then, boom, boom. I have like this. I have his shoulders kind of up here. Uh. Uh. Yep. Mm. Let's see. Towards the move a bit. Oh, I should make his body lower. He's doing a lower punch. I'm having him crouch lower because he's he's moving his arm up like this. Um, and hold the guy's hand up. So now, because to move his hand up, so now the hand is like this. Here's the other guy's hand, like going this way. The hand, the guy's hand, is punching down here. So they kind of meet in the center here. Uh, I'll have his arm kind of angled like this instead. You know, his head is like here. Arms going like this. He's trying to extend his arm out to punch him. So I'm gonna actually do some force shortening here to kind of get that nice, nice punching angle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then.
cool. Uh, might kind of change this posing a bit slightly. Because uh, sometimes, yeah, like you see, um, you know, I'm just erasing and redrawing all the time. Sometimes the poses don't work. Sometimes they do. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't like where the head's placement. You know. I'm looking at the previous frame to see where I want everything to be directed as. Um, let's see. Oh, actually, I should have drawn a torso and stuff first. <laughs> uh, let's see. And I could probably, I could fix everything later as long as I get this kind of like done. <laughs> So that's good. Boom. Punch. Didn't land. His his back looks kinda weird, but you know, <laughs> it's fine. Um that's one thing uh that's one thing I feel like you guys might come across as trying to be perfect with, with everything. You know, you see how I'm not perfect. You see how beautiful my, my, my drawings are, you know? They're they're not perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. oh, look how weird his legs look. <laughs> yeah. At least I got the idea. And you can just do this as stick figures too. So, you know. Yeah. <sighs> so for me, I'm trying to... Right now, I'm trying to design, like, what, what would be the action that comes after this little guy who's trying to hit, hit a motherfucker with another motherfucker. Uh, so I've got, like, some ideas of, like, a more cartoony version where he's got, like, his butt flying, uh, going up in the air with his legs out. And I can do, like, a less cartoony version where it's... A little bit more plausible to how someone flinging someone by the leg would might look, but it, it but most of it is like kind of based on like there's like kind of this S curve shape that's going on here for the overall flow of the line of action. The main thrust is like of it is like rippling up through this guy that's driving the action across here, pulling this guy forward, and then the like the action the center of the action travels up the body into this guy's body, which becomes the force, the point of impact. Like right here. So that stuff, it's like that stuff I was talking about at the beginning of the session. You have a force that's, a force that's pushing into another form that's acting against it and a force and a form that's reacting to it. That's what's happening here. Like with this guy being flung. So the acting force is here. This is like the, this part of this guy's torso is driving the action, and that's good. That the center of where that action is being driven is going to travel up this as this like C curve, as this like kind of S curve thing I have here sequentially starts like doing this kind of wave pattern thing. And then like rip whips forward. There would definitely be a part where like the guy was holding this guy by the leg and then there here's the guy right here's the guy right here here's his head here's his arms there here's the guy all right here it's starting to come up his butt comes up or something or his back from like the force of like him going up and then like force of this coming of like this coming down so that like the s curve kind of reverses on itself and then like the, as the guy impacts he goes kind of like pancake he kind of pancakes the other the other direction till this guy kind of like settles maybe he kicks out his legs or something or maybe his legs get flung up as like flung up and out and then he settles or something like that Might let go of the dude's leg in order to kind of steady himself or something. But yeah. But you see what I'm talking about? Is like as like the wave travels along this kind of ripple pattern, the point of force pushing these guys forward travels up both of their bodies as the as the S curve whips forward and transfers the, the force of him up into this guy 
because he's trying uh, the the because what he's trying to do is he's trying to take the force that he's pulling up from his foot up through here up to his torso uh, through his arms and he's trying to transfer that force into this guy's body that so he can use him as a blunt instrument basically. Oh, I just got raided with a party of five from M. Collins. Thank you for coming. We are discussing uh, figure drawing and animation action with a bunch of time poses for people to to draw and vibe to on screen right now. We normally do like time posing sets, but we have a special guest animator who works in the Japanese animation industry, who's Maxi who up here on the right, who oh is designing goodness. a little uh, who's designing a little uh, uh, fight scene improvised fight scene right now well i'm kind of vibing with what he's doing a bit while i'm thinking about like how to design some actions some funny actions or violent little bits of violence myself like this this little exchange here with this guy leaping through the air and then he chops this dude's head off just thinking of that stuff like that this is what i started with for the for the guy uh guy who is gonna hit a uh, hit another motherfucker with another motherfucker, basically. Uh, space Dad, watch yeah. your Lakers. What's uh, up? Uh, watch your Lakers, bro. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, it's just kind of rare for me to hear curse words. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. What for me or just in general? Oh, it's just in general. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. No, uh, we're, we're we're pretty salty on my streams. That's good. All right, cool. So we no, get, it's, uh, it's good. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm okay with it. It's we cut, we cuss like sailors, just like that. Just like the sailor, that's, the sailor that's on screen right now. Yeah, the name of the game tonight is thinking about action, like thinking about the before and after of what's happening and the poses that you look at and the, po the poses that you design. Um, think about the different ways that action that the action can play out. And also always have like burning in the back of your head and uh, an idea of the f uh, have, have burning in the back of your head like the idea that these figures that you're drawing are not flat 2D things. They are uh, characters moving through th uh, gesture drawing moving through 3D space. So always kind of have like the sort of the sense of three dimensionality to even your like your rough gestures like these guys right here. Like I even have that like I have the correlate the elbows to each other there for example. Uh, I've got like the tilt of the upper body here versus the tilt of the hips kind of curving around the front of the form. Like look for little opportunities for information for 3D forms in there. Like I got a floor grid here on this character. Let's see, what else can I do with this? Let's make a new page, I think. Do you do martial arts? I used to, once upon a time. I used to do a lot of athleticism stuff. Now it's just like, this mainly goes into, I mean, I do jogging, but now it just mainly goes into, um, my old my old athleticism days goes mainly into animation, so I'm able to like sympathize with what a figure's doing, and kind of put my head and head in their in their head. But uh, but yeah, I mean it's not really necess completely necessary to be terribly hugely athletic to get really good action drawing. Um, it helps for sure, like. There's a lot of people I know that are like amazing like martial arts acting animators and story artists who are really good athletes in real life and understand that stuff because and they're able to like shoot their own reference of themselves acting out stuff. It's an excuse to get into more into shape for sure. I think when I get further <laughs> along in this, I'm probably going to be shooting reference and trying to like get some more exercise in so I can you know, I can be more effective with my reference.
So like remember like Avatar actually actually had their um their artists and animators take uh, martial arts classes. There was a big like feature ad on that. Oh really? That's yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, remember they they designed like the martial arts styles of the different empires. Or uh, the different oh. uh the different kingdoms in um in Avatar based on different forms of, like um Air, air bending was like Shaolin Kung Fu. Uh, fire bending was more like kind of karate. Um, or Kenpo karate. Uh, not quite sure what water bending is. What water bending was? If anyone know, knows uh, offhand, but in Korra they had a lot of Taekwondo. Ah, yeah, interesting. It's probably something to do with with Kara herself, or was it just in general with the show? Mm. Uh, let's see. Oh no, no, it, it, it was the show because um a lot of the because a lot of the it, it was made by Studio Mir. Oh no, no, no! It was a uh, water bend. Water bending was based on Taekwondo. Oh really? Yeah. Oh no, no, because uh, in one of the in one of the uh, in all of the cool fight scenes in uh, Korra, they do a lot of cool kicks, right? You know? And because because um, Studio Mir is based in Korea, and Korea right. the main fighting style in Korea is Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or actually no, I think Earthbending was based on Taekwondo. Oh, uh, I think Earthbending was Korean. Um, Earthbending might have been Taekwondo actually. Wasn't uh, Water Bending based on Tai Chi? I think you might be right. But yeah. like the water bending in Korra was it? It looked a little bit different from the in the original yeah. series. You might be right. Uh, like, like, like they they might have been doing the fu the fusing it with Taekwondo stuff or some other things, for sure. Yeah, it matches really well with the uh, personality of Korra. Yeah, well, Korra was also doing a lot of moves that kind of seemed like uh, kickboxing moves too. Like Cora herself, I mean. I heard the uh, last Airbender, Airbending was actually studied from Bagua, and uh, mm. which is another kung fu, and then the uh, which is a very beautiful kung fu, uh, and then uh, Firebending was Shaolin. Ah, uh, yeah. Let me look at uh, there. There was like a like karate, I think, that went into. Let's see, Firebending. Yeah, I'm actually looking for this because uh, a few months ago I did yeah, save right. a playlist on YouTube. Uh, yeah, Firebending was Northern. What the art styles were, what the fighting styles were for the element. Bending. Yeah, so Firebending was fighting. was you're right. Firebending was Northern was Northern Shaolin, which I I wouldn't be surprised if like it, it feels very karate ish. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a, a descendant of karate or or something or like a, a karate is a descendant of it somehow, but um. Yeah, let's see here. Pretty sure water bending is Tai Chi as well. Mm -hmm. Ooh, like everybody here is talking about Avatar. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like, yeah, I mean, like, if you're talking about like martial arts stuff, uh, Avatar, like, Avatar developed a visual language for um, around existing martial arts to create a fantasy martial arts, uh, and, I found which is really interesting. For sure. I found my, my folder of references, so I'm sending a couple on the drawing corner chat. I don't even think most anime goes into that much level of level of thought with their martial arts choreography. Uh, some do, some do. Yeah. Mm. The usually the ones that are made by people who really nerd out about martial arts stuff. What are some ones that do? Well, I mean, like Samurai Champloo. That's an obvious choice. Uh, what are some recent ones you can think of that really do? Hmm. It's over the top and crazy, but it would. I've have I did see some stuff that seemed like identifiable martial arts systems in uh, God of High School. 
Can anyone speak to that a little bit? Hmm. I don't know. I guess I haven't watched enough anime to to recognize all. Because one of the things about um, about martial arts anime is that they spe- sometimes specialize in one single move in in the show, right? Or right. if, if they do tai chi or do something, they they usually do that do that like move to like end the fight, right? You know. Right. Right. Um. Um. You look at Baki on Netflix, right? You know, and it's really it's really like. It's really like annoying to me, where it's like a cool fighting show, right? You know, all like these, like like the buffest buffest dudes, right? You know, all coming coming and fighting each other, right? you know. Mm-hmm. Um, you have this like you have this like fight who like he's he you have this guy who's like a three who's like a who's like uh who's like a martial artist like a, a kung fu master, right? you know, fighting this guy who fights dirty, right? You know, um, he 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 like spits like a needle into his eye, right? You know, <laughs> and then he, he like he like which is um, totally something you could do in real life, yeah, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah. No, 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 no. You that's wouldn't not, stab yourself not, in the lips. <laughs> that's not the issue. But the yeah, issue yeah. was the fact that um, that um, that the whole fight was only like two, three moves, right? You know, and and it took like was it like a whole episode or something like that before it happened? Mm. Right? And then and then they're like, oh, he's so strong, you know, like that, you know. And then and then, then and I'm just like, damn it, <laughs> where was the fight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the storytelling got in the way. Yeah, yeah. and the fight thing, fight was in 3D, which is not an issue it's, as long as it's done right, you know. Because you look at the intro for Baki, you know, he has like this cool training session. He's like, he's like, he had that cool like, was it uh, the song? The song from the intro is like Gong of Knockout, right? and they have Baki doing like cool fighting, and even though it's like in 3D, right? You know, mm-hmm. it was so cool to see all those moves. And then, but you don't see any of that in the in the show. You don't see any exchanging in, in, the, in, the, in the blows. You just see cool single hits or combos or like that and then they kind of you know you know yeah which to be fair is kind of how the stuff is staged in the manga too which is kind of actually a problem yeah yeah let's let's think of some what's some good anime that really shows off martial arts just in general really well like thoughtful martial arts thoughtful martial arts there, there, there was one I forgot what it's called uh, there was a new one there was a new one like that came out like a while ago uh, I wouldn't really call it martial arts per se the guy, but... the, the guy did Taekwondo um, and it was like a whole tournament thingy oh uh, it was like a Taekwondo sports anime basically I know it's a tech, it, was, it was like a tournament. Like it was like a whole to- I've cut martial arts tournament. Was it realistic martial arts or was it? Yeah, it was realistic martial arts. Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's so annoying that it's like, oh, it's like true martial arts, and they're like, oh, Dragon Ball. I'm like, no. <laughs> Yeah, you don't get a lot of good martial arts anime. Most of the time, it's like just uh, they they're like sword fighting or or using powers of some sort. Yeah. Or they or they're too powerful, like uh, Fist of the North Star. <laughs> you know, where it's not really a martial arts anime. It's just a guy punching. People in the <laughs> I'm gonna head. wave my <laughs> sword and create a wa- create a wave of uh, of special effects animation at you. That kind of shit. No, no, but but but, but this and North Star is more of like a, it's it's an actual like they're hand to hand fighting, you know. But yeah, they're yeah. like so strong where they don't really fight. It's more of like they just they just one punch kill people, you know. Yeah. 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 Inherently, one of the shortcomings of that, like, um, like they, they were like they were trying like the genius of this and North Star was like combining like, oh, uh, Bruce Lee and like uh and like. Uh, providing aspects of like Bruce Lee and uh, and like Ch- and like Hong Kong martial arts with um, with Mad Max and stuff, but then like the actual martial arts stuff is a, uh, suffers a little bit because the characters are so s- hilariously overpowered that the fights really inherently they can't really have the normal kind of exchange of blows kind of stuff that happens except like in rare circumstances because like the blows are just are just so lethal. 
sort of wrote yourself into a corner there, buddy. But to be fair, it's it's damn cool when heads explode from punchy. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. You don't see that a lot. Because, you know, PG-13. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Daddy? Oh my, uh, Shinderu. So, like, I, the, if anything, like, the martial arts and stuff, uh, like, or at least the, um, as far as, like, staging a scene goes, like, uh, I think that setting up the head explodes, the head explosion payoffs in Fist of the North Star is worth kind of studying from a, a satisfying setup and payup point of view, I would say. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Someone says, there's a scene in Berserk that Griffin dodges a punch uh, against Guts and sweeps uh, into an arm bar and breaks his arm. Hmm. If you could find that scene on Sakugaburu, uh, uh, link, it in the, link it in the Discord. Here's the Discord. Yeah, today was a really good practice session overall for just the everything. Like, we watched a lot of, uh, like, all, everything adding up together, I mean. Like, uh, me and a whole bunch of other, uh, the other folks watched um, Yojimbo, and then we watched Samurai Champloo. Like, I didn't do a lot of blabbing about, um, about study stuff. Uh, in the Discord off uh, in the Discord off stream stuff today, but I did a lot of drawing and a lot of vibing, and it was good, really good session. And tomorrow will be more practice time and more movie time. I definitely want to play Sword of the Stranger tomorrow. That would be really good to have on for sure. And then a kind of a samurai epic. It's not just like, uh, um, it's not just about the fight scenes, but like uh, really good samurai films also do a really good job with setting up the stakes, and so that there's like an emotional weight behind why they why the fight's happening and stuff. I'm also really fascinated with Akira Kurosawa's fight scenes because his fight scenes are. Sometimes they do kind of get stylized, like you'll see like a big gushing spray of blood or something like that. But for the most part, his fight scenes are like, they're over really fucking quickly. And you kind of, uh, they're not, they don't really feel very glamorous. Like characters just get like stabbed and then die agon in agony in the mud. And, um, and it's, it's not really glamorizing or fun and like you don't really you don't really see an awful lot in Akira Kurosawa films of like trying to make the martial artists look cool like they're kind of like they're kind of like butchers they just carve someone up and then the person dies and uh it goes through uh, often either dies like either dies like really quickly and matter-of-factly or um or goes through like severe agony before before expiring and uh, I think a lot of anime kind of fails at. Um, I think a lot of anime kind of gets its head up its own ass about like depicting, like sword fight death or sword deaths and things like that, where it's they celebrate they they celebrate like the sword fight or the actual like action of the fight way too much, and I would be very interested in like. Maybe seeing if I can take a look at um, fights in animation that are handled a little along the lines of how Akira Kurosawa handles them, if I could find some. I know I know I've seen them. I think there's some in Blade of Immortal, Blade of the Immortal that handle them like that. If I recall. 
But like we're so used to like seeing sword fights and just fights in general, just in you know, not just in anime, but just in like regular cinema, really glamorizing the violence and stuff. But there's lots of people who are acolytes of Akira Kurosawa and stuff, or uh, and there's other ways to handle how violence is depicted on screen. There's sometimes when it's not like glamorized with like cool slow motion shots or things like that. It's just 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 it's brutal it's quick it's awful um and uh, it's not cool and it's horrifying and how in how like mundane it is like it, it like you think about it, like a like a like samurai are basically butchers they're just they're just butchers of human flesh uh and that uh there there's not anything glamorous about just like being able to like fucking murder people with a sword, you know, if you really think about it. Yeah. <laughs> and so, there's actually a lot of samurai films that kind of explore that a bit. <laughs> like they're they're not, they're not fucking uh they're not fucking warrior poets. They're just there's just a bunch of thugs and butchers and stuff. Especially like some of the more chaotic uh, the chaotic period uh, films. Yeah, I mean, like, we're so used, we're, we're so used to, like, oh, if we have a fight scene in anime, it's gotta be cool and over the top, and so, like, I, I think that's fine, but, uh, I, I'm interested in looking at other ways to depict violence that, that do have meaning to them, but, um, uh, but have, like, story reasons and tone reasons to, like, uh, to not be like glamorous at all you know yeah yeah i'm gonna be on the lookout for that kind of stuff if i see examples of what i'm talking about in anime i'll try to cite some examples oh okay all right well, I gotta... you gotta you gotta head out yeah, head out. <laughs> good timing too, because the class is uh, the class is uh, about yeah. uh, eight eight thirty. Eight thirty is the quitting time for the class. Yeah, I'll still anime, and when I come back, I'll probably hang out. Uh, well, depending on as my plans change, uh, yeah, I really want to see, see where this. Yeah, we're 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 done for the evening, uh, but I'm gonna be playing Samurai Champloo, um, off after the Discord after the Discord stream ends. Uh, I mean, after the Twitch stream stream ends, uh, I'll be playing Samurai Champloo on my Discord for folks. Of picking up where we left off in it, and then tomorrow I'll be playing sort of the uh, sort of the stranger and maybe a few other things. Yeah. So party. So, oh, yeah. Go. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, I, was, I was gonna explain what, what I was gonna do with here, and then then uh, then then how I was gonna end it. So I was essentially gonna end it with uh, so they're gonna exchange, 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 do some cool quick moves, and I won't throw in a bit of like hike, like, like jumping kicks. Um, um, cause he'll also do like a roundhouse kick here too, when he, he like, he like dodges it. Um, and then essentially push the, the enemy off, off screen, you know, push the enemy off screen. So then it'll cut to the, cut to the next action scene, right, you know, uh, um, cause that's what I'm leading it to. Yeah. So that's what I was going to do. And, uh, and, but then I'll probably post it up here later on yeah, yeah. when I do this and clean it up mm -hmm. a bit too. Yeah, so yeah, hope you guys learned something from this <laughs> uh, kind of like directing and how to draw faster and you know, mm -hmm. you know yeah. Yep. All right, but yeah, go ahead, uh, go ahead, space that. Yeah. Anyway, like I was saying, party in the Discord, folks. Uh, the Discord link is if you are not if you are on Twitch but not on the Discord, Discord link is in the Twitch right now. Uh, I'm going to shut down the stream shortly on Twitch, but. In my Discord, we are going to be watching some Samurai Champloo. So come on and and hang out. And also, uh, I want also oh I want to take a take another look at people's lovely drawings in Magna Studio before we before we go for the evening. So there were some other neat drawings that people were doing earlier that I think are on hidden layers now. Yeah, there was a storyboard drawing somebody was doing here.
Yeah, yeah, there we go. Uh, there's part of it. Since I'm admin, I can do this. Yeah, they did like a background and stuff, and then did like a floor grid and some other things. Here it is. Yeah, uh, it was a fun evening today. Some other neat drawings that are now hidden here. Some Delta Room fan art in there. Yeah, um, so, uh, I guess I'll, um, since not, nobody drew on this layer, I will copy-paste this one into the Discord for people to doodle in. Put that in the Magna Studio link section here. And uh, now I'm, I'll shut down the stream and we can watch some uh, Samurai Champloo. So thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed this kind of really loose session. It was sort of improvised there when uh, when Maxi showed up. Uh, I had some other more formal stuff planned, but uh, <laughs> that's okay. Like, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll... So for no, 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 it's fine. We were vibing. It was fine. It was fine that the things turned out this way. We, I think we got more out of it than I would than we would have if I had followed my original plan. Yeah, sorry. I also gotta get better at explaining stuff too. So. That's fine. That's what these streams are for. We're just vi vibing and studying, and studying together. So I'm gonna shut down the Twitch stream right now, and I'll see you guys in the Discord. <laughs>